What is it, Sal? Hey, Howard, can I ask you a question about your opinion? Yeah. How do you think Kid Rock's going to get around the hep C? What do you mean? She's got hep C. I yeah, mean... but supposedly you don't catch it uh, through sexual contact. It has to be blood contact. Really? Yeah, I, I mean, mean, you have to be careful, I guess, but... Oh, well, that's pretty risky. He man. was there when she got diagnosed, and he, you know, continued to be with her for, like, over a year. Yeah. That's, that's love. I mean... I mean, but maybe he, he's gone to a doctor and found out that it's a very low risk that he gets it. Good for him. I mean, I don't know. Well, he got a vaccine. I don't know. But yeah. think about it. Like you, Howard, you got bet she's beautiful. She's not diseased. All the all the pussy Kid Rock could get. You're going to shack up and marry somebody with hep C? Hey, he left her. I thought he left her because she had hep C, but I obviously was wrong. Good for him. Hey, boy, I uh, read that uh, someone handed me a note saying that you... You know how you're in love with me and stuff, and like you can even memorize what shirts I wear, and like you right. worship me, and I'm not the first person that you ever worship. That you had like almost a stalking charge against you. Oh, with Marissa Tomei. Marissa Tomei, the, 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 the manager had to make sure that you were never around Marissa Tomei, and they they took out like a restraining order against you. In the stock market, sometimes we would get lists of, of big big celebrity names. So Marissa, I was a big fan of Marissa Tomei from my cousin Vinny. I I used to love the way she looked. I used to masturbate to her all the time. Yeah. So she cut her hair at a point, and remember when she cut it real short? She dyed it yeah. blonde, and she looked really ratty. Okay. So I decided to call her up and leave her a message. I go, I think you look a little ratty. You don't look Italian anymore. You don't have the right look. What are you doing to yourself? I used to pleasure myself to you, and you know, you're going downhill. Get back to that original hot Italian look. And uh, her <laughs> lawyers, her and her lawyers called. They traced the call. <laughs> And they said, we don't know who that guy is, but whoever he is, if he ever calls again, we're going to put a restraining order out on him and have him arrested for harassment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what do you know about that, Shirley? Well, I'm, I, I found out about it. Sorry. I found out about it uh, through his friend, his buddy. His best friend told me yeah. the story at Caroline's the other night. Why would you care, dude? Like, why um, would you? Like, it's not going to do you any good if she's blonde or brunette. She's not going to go out with you. You were a married man. Yeah, but I, you know, I just focused on that. I guess I, I get totally obsessed with these people, and I thought I was giving her good advice. I right. really was because, you know, no, but like, why, do you, why do you care? And what, and what does she need your advice? Do you understand how creepy that sounds? What you just said in someone's machine? I, you know, to me, Artie, I would say people probably won't tell her that to their face. I mean, Howard has the ability to do it on the air because he's very truthful. I was, uh, I had the ability to do it over her answering machine, so maybe she should have taken the advice as, as something good. You know, she did go back to the. Well, she hair. is brunette again. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, but a total stranger calls up and says, "I used to jerk off to you, and you should cut your hair." Well, I was made... it only one phone call, or were there many? It was one, and one. boy, did that phone call bounce back so fast, my head was spinning. I got yeah. in a lot of trouble for that shit. See, I think it'd be creepier if he did all this and said, you know, well, I'd, I'd really like to bang her, and that's why I'm trying to do it. But he's like, I just want to give her advice on, on her look. He's a weirdo. And he gives you, the weirdest thing is he gives you the same kind of advice, and he has the same obsession with you, the same exact one. And I got a dick. And you yeah. hired him. No. She got a lawyer. You hired him. Yeah, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Shouldn't I get a lawyer? <laughs> no, your obsession is different. Your obsession is an entertainment obsession because of, of the goodness that you give to people. Yeah, but you depressed. did say in the hypnosis that you wanted to blow me, so yeah, well, I don't know. That's creepy. Yeah, 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 again, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Speaking Gary. Speaking of his obsessions, didn't you, weren't you the guy that was so obsessed with Ace Freely that you rifled through our releases to find his home number so you could call him? Yeah. No, well, uh, Will was teasing me with that. I, I wouldn't go that far. But you, you went and got his number. We just told you not to call it. You would have if we didn't stop you. Uh, perhaps. <laughs> but Howard, um... <laughs> Douchebag. Yeah. Howard? Yes? I wanted to say you look really good. I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm, not, I'm not fucking with you. You look really good at the Hamptons at the uh, premiere. I saw the pictures with you. Oh, my God. But hold on. But I have yeah. to give you some advice. When you sit down, like in a movie or something... Get the fuck out of here, you homo. What hug he your shirt. he go on that hold website on. and look for your pictures? Hey, hey, He's got to look hey, good. Hey, Sal, Sal, listen to me. You're sick. You're a homo. There's something wrong with you. I'm going to tell you something right now. Don't tell me what to do. Okay. I don't care. I'm not a girl. I don't care how I look. Tug your shirt cuffs forward so when you sit down, they don't wrinkle. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Because when you stood up, it's because that's what I worry about. You didn't see all those wrinkles around your stomach. I don't care. You look good. You put all that time in. I didn't put a minute's thought into it. I went to a movie with Beth, and they photographed me. I don't sit and fucking get dressed for this shit. But you had wrinkles, and I'm just saying, I got a wrinkly shirt that had nothing to do with sitting there. Get the fuck out of here, you sick bastard. Before I throw something at you. 
You know, was just, that you know in that instance, I couldn't even look at him. Yeah. I honestly couldn't even look at no, him. No, at was first that creepy. I thought he was being funny, <laughs> no. but then he really creeped out. Stare at a photo of me you like. Oh, my God. Oh, he's so gay. He really is. A, he might be a psychopath. <laughs> you look good. You look really good. But I have a bit of advice. Oh. <laughs> Put him... Uh, I'm, uh, that was embarrassing. Yeah, it, it's embarrassing. I, I have to shut him up to stop him from being embarrassed. Oh, the douche chills. Ooh. Yeah. It's, it's, he doesn't even know how gay he is. <laughs> You know, Beth says to me she wants to go to this movie. And when we go to these movies, they take pictures. You know? But and is he just looking in the paper and seeing this, or does he actually go on that website to see every picture that was taken of you? He goes on the web. He would have to go on websites, look up my name, and, like, search for me. Right. There's that one website, yeah. like, Wire, whatever that Wire is. Wire yeah. yeah, where they have all celebrities. Yeah, show. that's how. I mean, that's just gay to be putting my name in and looking for, for pictures of me over the weekend. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, it's, it's sad. It's so that's, creepy. You know. And, yeah, this is a man with a family. Yeah. Look at your kids. Advise them on what to do with their shirt. He's got cute kids. Pull your shirt down. Dude, you wear makeup. This guy puts on makeup every day. He's not even on camera. Well, he would make you up, too, I'm sure. Yeah. To look like him. Yeah, I don't wear makeup. <laughs> Holy mackerel. That's right, Fred. Drop everything. Fred Fred. Quick yeah. questions for you, Sal, on the show today. You went in and you told Howard to give a little some fashion tips, and people were kind of taken aback by that. What That's was weird. going on? I don't know. <laughs> you know, the guy always looks really, really good. He, he he dresses to impress. He's a big, big celebrity, and I noticed he had a lot of wrinkles on his shirt. So I just gave him some advice: is that when you sit down, just pull your shirt tails forward and lean back a little bit, and you'll. You won't have those wrinkles when you take photographs. But apparently it turned into a whole, you faggot, you loser, you creep, you stalker. So that's how it ended up. And why, why, do you think you caught, why do you think you caught that heat? You don't need us here. You can tell it by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, just, I just wanted to give him some advice on how to remove the wrinkles from his shirt, and he, he got really right. offended by that. Can so I, I can explain balls. it to you. All right, sorry. John, John Hine, Fred, everybody in this room. Can any guy in this room tell me what any other guy wore last week? No, Absolutely and that's why, not. like, Sal, no. if a guy gives you advice on your thing. wardrobe yeah, and how definitely. you dress, don't don't you think that sounds a little weird coming from another guy? Uh, apparently, now it does. So we I know apologize. you're. We know. I listen. I know for a fact you're not gay for real. Right. So that, but that would be funnier if you were gay because now you're into this weird sort of obsessive fetish place. Mm. I hate wrinkles, Bob. Do I take an iron <laughs> on the road? Yes, you do. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like having a woman on the road, and it's like ridiculous. But it's not about wrinkles. It's about Howard's wrinkles. That's where it gets weird. He looked nice. He had wrinkles. I noticed that's the wrinkles. Love. I gave him advice. But that's, that's love right there. Thanks, and he, can I just ask you Thanks. one other question? Because we were talking about, Fred and I were talking about this right after the show ended. Uh-oh. For, for real, the old jokes aside, where did you ever get the impression that you could call Marissa Tomei at what may or may not be her home number and tell her that she's not looking that good and that you stopped jerking off to her and could she be hot again and not think you were going to get in trouble. You know, that's the weird thing, not thinking I could get in trouble. I Honestly, I hung up the phone thinking I did a good deed, and sure enough, five minutes later, my compliance officer called me in the room. It was a closed-door meeting, and they were really Compli pissed off. What, what? Wait a minute. Whoa. Whoa. I'm, did I miss something here? Where did this phone call take place? At, at, um, Ten years ago. When he was stock doing a stockbroker. Back in oh, the so that's why you're not stockbroking anymore. You're <laughs> busy giving uh, that's that's just one, one, that's just one of the stories. Well, did you really? You, IBM or address, you and I but, want to know which person in your family has the wrinkle fetish too. Was it the mom or the hmm, dad? That's a good question. You know what? No, that's a family. That's a family thing. It's got to be. Probably my dad. You know, my dad's like well, I don't know. My dad kind of like he lived out of the trunk of his car. You know, he had a separate life altogether. But, but you he always, always had, have to be. He always had his yeah. He always had his suits really nice, and he had his leather Playboy boots hidden underneath the tire of the car and hidden? his yeah yeah because. You know, he came. He, he would come home from work, and then all of a sudden, he'd leave at eleven o'clock at night and come home at five o'clock in the morning with a totally different outfit on, completely different wardrobe. <laughs> oh my God. And we always were like, "Where's this coming from?" And then one day, we would go into Great Adventure, and he had to open the trunk of his car to hide his gun back then, which was another story, another another story together. And we this saw we saw all of these suits <laughs> in his the trunk of his car. And what was, what was his explanation? We didn't ask because if we asked, you know, we probably got smacked around. He, Sal, he, Sal brings the shirts to, like, they're in the plastic. He yeah. irons them, puts them in plastic, and then carries them. Like it or not. Yeah. Yeah. 
somebody just got fired. Is that somebody telling us we have to take a break? No, no. keep going. Keep going. Well, that was it. You know, so uh, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not big on wrinkles. You know, um, and that's, pretty, I mean, a, a lot of people don't like wrinkles. Some people like wrinkles. I don't like wrinkles. But, I don't like know. wrinkles either, but I don't care if someone else has them. Right. Yeah, some people don't like guys telling other guys about right. wrinkles. It that's was, a, it was an obvious thing that I noticed in the picture. I tried to let him know, and that's it. I mean, what do you want from me? I mean, the fucking guy wears capri pants and white shoes and nice shirts and everything else. Again, I don't know what he wears. I really don't. Right. Okay, well, you don't, but I do. And it's, it's it, to me, it's not a bad thing, but I just want to say, hey, just there's a, a little trick to avoid wrinkles when you're taking pictures. That's all. But you don't see how people could find it strange that you notice that kind of stuff about Howard? Like, you know, you're spending the time checking out the picture and seeing what's... When it was that prominent, it was different. I mean, if it was a few wrinkles, I probably wouldn't have noticed. But it was so obvious that there was wrinkles around his belly area that I wanted to give him the advice. But again, and, and I think I already brought this up belly today, oh. it's not like you picked up People Magazine and saw this picture, right? That means that you go on the internet on the weekends and you put Howard's name into some sort of right. a search to see what he did the, the weekend. Yes or no? No, that's I'd done that in the past. I didn't do it. I didn't do so that. How did, this run, how did you run across it? On, it was on uh, Stern Fan Network. Posted Howard oh. Stern and Beth at a, a premiere for a movie. Who else has wrinkly clothes? That's a celebrity. <laughs> Top five wrinkled people. Uh, no, most people don't. Most people look pretty, pretty good. You know, uh, I, I have never noticed any other celebrity with wrinkled clothes on. I don't before. think you've ever noticed any other celebrity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think you're right. Is there any other celebrity besides Howard? I getting back, so. getting back to the member, become your clients. Um, Harvey Leach became a client of mine, uh, who's friends, uh, a friends of no, Gary. No, but, but you got his number through the show. Was yeah, it? right, right. Uh, um, I mean, did you ever call any celebrities and did it ever become anything more no, than... No, I never solicited them for stock. No, never. Except for Mickey Rooney. All right, we got to take a break. Let these guys get out of here. Go <laughs> listen to Kill or Be Killed. You know what it's going to air, right? You're just taped. Yeah. <laughs> Miserable Men Tonight. Miserable oh, Men yeah. Tonight, yeah, 7 right. o'clock 7 on 8. Howard 101. You're listening to the wrap-up show on Howard 100 and Howard 101 will... If anybody is following this story, uh, I do have a memo from Tim where he gives me a full report Ooh. on what is going on with the intensive Riley negotiations. And I, for those of you who are fans of Riley, I don't know if you're going to be pleased with this. Uh oh. Because uh, Tim does not have good stuff to report here. No, I'm going to read it to you. It's not a negotiation, it's just him, you know, popping off, and you can't get a word in edgewise. So All you right. get the same lecture oh, yeah. that we get. Yeah. All right, here we go. No, I, here we don't go because I don't see it in here. Now, I know I told him to print it. But, Jason, do you print this stuff out? Yeah. You print it out? What? I forgot it, dude. I forgot it. I never got it. I, I forwarded it to you and I, put print. I don't have it. No. It's not in my I'll, email. I'll print it up real quick. All right. I don't know. Lately, Jason and I... Aren't I, on the same page. No. Well, maybe I didn't With send it to pages. him. With all your pages. I'm going to check my computer and see if I sent yeah, it Yeah, I swear to you, Matt. It's not my email, dude. All right. Well, give us an update, basically, what you said in the uh, well, email. Uh, I, tr I called Riley later in the afternoon because I wanted to see as far as what we could do logistically, and I was even considering the possibility of sending somebody out to his home to install uh, a unit where he could broadcast from his home. Uh and then I opened up the phone call because he was complaining about not getting paid. Uh, and the reason he wasn't, you know, being paid for the remaining three shows is because he didn't finish all his paperwork. He right. signed the releases and all that kind of thing, but there were some things that he needed to sign in order to get paid the remaining uh, for the remaining shows. So I explained that to him. Then he went off. He says, well, my other guys, I says, well, the other problem is your other guys just submitted their invoices and they didn't do their paperwork. Yeah, I mean, how many times so, can you tell yeah, them the yeah, same yeah, thing? Yeah, you tell and him I, and he remembers it for five seconds. And I asked him, I says, we, you know, I'll tell you what, why don't you come in? I'll sit down with you. I'll go through it with you, you know, so we can get it done. And then he just went, we're, we're not getting, you know, it's the whole thing. And, and there's no reasoning with him. Well, maybe uh, it's time to, uh, it, it, yeah. maybe it's time to end the show. And, and, I, and I tried desperately to, to work it out, even though he was very acoustic and, and very, uh, just out of, well, What's acoustic mean? Well, I mean, accusing and so forth, and, you know. Caustic. Caustic. Acoustic. Isn't that the right word? I know. No really, when you talk, man, you use what you Why do you just keep your language simple? Why do you try okay. to use big All words? Right, okay. Tim tries to use big words. Yeah, Accusator, he, he was accusing me of this and that, and I'm like, my. look, I, I, it's just, Riley. I said, 
I said. Yeah, not I says. Yeah, go ahead. I says, I'm sorry. I'm right. on a roll here. Go ahead, yeah. It's a tough roll. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you are the program. Well, now, and yeah, now, now you're still self-conscious. Tim's so. a very uptown-looking guy. Yeah, you know, yeah, right. Tim looks like yeah. a rich guy. You know, like yeah. well-fed. Yeah. Right. He looks yeah, like well a fed. club yeah. guy. But he speaks like Daniel Carver without <laughs> the racism. Yeah. I mean, he's a good guy, too, but it's like you really yeah. you look like a rich guy to me. Yeah, like, thanks. You're ready to get rolled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, you know, like, a, you know, like definitely a guy. Who grew Here up. we go. Here we go. You do look like Rush yeah, Limbaugh. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. I yeah. know that you say that. Yeah. Like yeah. well groomed and sort of, you know, yeah. just and happy and you know. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. it looks like he's just about to golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I'd, there you go. Definitely. So Tim, yeah, so it must be uh, very so, frustrating. So it was, and then uh, I, I just said, look, Riley, it looks like we can't come to a, a decision here, so let's just move on. So that's I how see. we left it. Right. So no, you didn't even get to no. a discussion of the possibility of putting equipment in his house or anything. No, didn't even come close. Then wow. the money thing, and it was just it got ugly. So wow. So so you said I can put some equipment in your home, and that didn't satisfy him. We didn't even really. We kind of touched no. on that, but it was just he was so uh, just over. Just nuts about the money part of it. Yeah. Well, you see what has happened. I think that Riley has gotten so irritated over this money thing, yeah. he can't hear anything else. Right. Well, Until he gets those checks in his pocket, he won't even be able to have another discussion. Hey, man, look, 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 you motherfuckers. Uh, You're uh, treating me like a field nigga. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I gotta make mine. You know, I gotta feed my family. Uh, Howard, just go on. You know, Robin, uh, I'm sick and tired of uh, your boats and. Uh, you know, your $17 million mansion, man. Uh, yeah, uh, look, man. You buffalo bitch. You buffalo bitch, man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, 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 you uh, uh, look, man. I don't have time. Uh, shit. Yeah, you really don't realize how crazy Riley uh, is until you try to have a real discussion. Uh, here's the other map. Tried to negotiate a deal with Riley Martin. Impossible. <laughs> Riley Martin was unreasonable, aggressive, threatening, and extremely, extremely insulting. <laughs> Throughout the conversation, Riley called me a lying Jew, motherfucker. And Tim, by the way, is not a Jew. I mean, just for the record. What and are calling you? Tim a lying Jew, he was half right. <laughs> what are you? English, Irish. But what's your religion? Do you have one? Catholic. No, oh, you're a lying Catholic. He looks like a, Tim looks like a slave owner. That's you the one Catholic I motherfucker. Oh, uh, look, you lying Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> Throughout the conversation, Riley called me a lying Jew, <laughs> motherfucker, nigger, and other choice words. <laughs> You're even a uh, look at that nigger. Oh, he's just out of it. The two major issues we attempted to deal with were Riley's refusal to sign paperwork that was sent to Riley and his crew by our HR department. The paperwork is mandatory in order to pay any independent contractor per serious policy. We have paid him for four shows to date, know him for three more. I pushed through the first four shows as an act of good faith, but cannot do this again until the paperwork is signed. The second issue that we attempted to deal with was Riley's salary per show. The closest thing I could figure out from Riley was a mention of $50,000 as chump change to you motherfuckers. So give me my goddamn money. <laughs> 50 grand is chump change. Uh, look, man, $50,000 is chump change to you motherfuckers. Uh, uh, give me my goddamn money. <laughs> like, he's got some money over here. My money, yeah. We're holding on to it. I offered to send an engineer and producer to his house so he wouldn't have to drive and incur the travel expenses, but he continues to demand an exorbitant amount of money. We left off at the same place we started, unable to see eye to eye. Uh, maybe we will run Best of Riley Martin tomorrow or, or not. I don't know. I'm willing to give it another go in a couple of days. Well, all right, let's. Um, yeah, I think you need what they call in the industry a cooling off cool, yeah. period. No, you two, you two really need a <laughs> because a lot of what was that word you used? A lot of a caustic, a caustic comments. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you just invented a new word. I think so. A caustic. What is so it? What word is he going for? Caustic. Oh. Caustic. No way, right? Is that or true? A I think he or was a costing. Like, like. Robbie yeah, because he was talking him, about being attacked. Costing. Did you try to? Were you, were you meaning like harsh and almost vulgar? Like yes, that's yes, cost. Yes. That's cost. Yes. Hey, man, why I gotta argue with a man who says a cost? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, Riley, you're on the air. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, Riley. You're Where's on the air. Where's my invoice? Yes, Riley. Uh, now, if you cannot understand this, and if you still oh. think 
uh, that uh, I will work for starvation, nigger wages, uh, in, uh, while getting 20,000 calls a goddamn hour, then you are rudely mistaken. I would rather take my chances on making it elsewhere. Well, we're giving you that well, opportunity. We, it's really we, paid we off so far. Read, we were saying let it go. Uh, hey, this this is bullshit, man. Is it? Bitch, I bitch, I've never, I've never, I've, I've never begged uh, for anything in my life. Right. Then why are you on the phone? But that's immaterial. <laughs> that's immaterial. That's got nothing to do with you giving me a decent salary, Howard, which you could do. Uh, offer one one hundredth of the interest on your goddamn money if you wish. Now, to give you an idea of how much we don't need Riley, um, th this is not really Riley. These are his, this is him. This tape. is his tape. Oh, oh, this is oh my God! I thought it was shot out of a uh, cannon. Really? Yeah. I said, boy, he's still as angry as he was oh, yesterday. Wow. We cannot... Riley, that listen. Is quite fucking simple. <laughs> look, look, Riley. Look. I don't know what you're trying to say. If you have some kind of new information, let us know. I understand that, and this is not right. Uh, it is simply not kosher. It is not right. It is not fair. If I don't produce for you three times the listening quotient I have now in the next three months, motherfucker, I will quit. Howard, <laughs> yeah, I have a question to ask Riley. Riley, My when you start, I have a question for you. And this is this is the question: You get hired for a job. They pay you minimum wage. When you prove yourself, don't you ordinarily get a raise as you prove your value? This Not before. You wanted to say all the time, yet you haven't said anything about paying a decent salary. But you haven't proved yourself yet, Riley. This bullshit you're offering me. You haven't proved, Riley. Answer the question. Have you? Situation. Have you? Riley, answer the you question. Jerk. Riley, <laughs> have you? Dark. You can't even answer the question. Well, why don't haven't the Martians the taught you anything, Riley? <laughs> the Beavians haven't they taught you anything? How? To, there's a question and there's an answer problem here. I I'm asking a question. Open. You're not giving me an answer. I... Riley. I tell you what. Well, why don't the why don't the motherfucker? When I when I started off on radio, well, Riley. An answer for okay, I'm sorry. Right. Go ahead. You seem struggling. No, when I was in the barrel knuckle rain, whooping motherfuckers' asses that look like you. Yeah, we'll try it now, Riley. This is why you think you. are Riley, try it now. Fifty or three hundred. Hey, motherfucker, try it now. Uh, uh, you talk a big game, but you're not proving anything yet. No. You have not proven yourself, Riley. My dog. And you're what's that? Look, my darling. Oh, now we're being nice. to add to your organization, not take away. And we love the fact that you're trying to add to the organization, but there is a protocol here. When I got hired in radio, I was making $150 a week. Hey, Fred. Fuck you. Fuck, Fuck you. Fuck me. <laughs> Fred. All I'm saying is... I was getting fucked, but I knew that that's what it took to get into the business. Does Fred know these are clips? No, I think he thinks he's talking to Riley. You guys don't oh, want really? To... Fred, did you hear what I said? I'm sorry. Fred, I'm look at me. Shit. Fred, look at me. That was Fred, good. look at me. This is a guy playing clips of Ryan. Oh, damn. I thought, I thought I was getting somewhere. But I him. announced it, and you totally... You know, I was so focused on trying to convince him, because I like Riley. Go ahead. You can go back to your discussion. Because it was great. Riley, what do you want to say to Fred? You jealous little petty bastard. <laughs> fucking dog. I couldn't believe that Fred was going. Yeah, he was going No, because I, really I really thought it was him. Wow. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> but I announced... Me. I thought I was getting something. You are telling me that you can offer somebody... Ten thousand dollars to get a uh, 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 wad on their face, and you can't give me but three hundred bucks. <laughs> we really don't need them. No, we don't need them. That's my point. Right. I'll tell you what we got. I got you, Fred, who was willing to argue with a tape, <laughs> and I got Fred. Riley. That's bullshit. I'd like to see I Fred it. beat up the tape. <laughs> he was challenging I the tape. Right. He was calling it out. I right. need to hire this guy with the clips. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> who is? What do you mean I've been paid? A hey, hey, Riley clip guy. Who are you? You, you, you tend to think that uh, the listening public uh, is as stupid as This guy's you are. good. It's me, Howard, it's Sal. Oh, oh, oh hey, Sal. I thought so. I said that's probably. Oh, good. We'll just have Sal do the show. Hey, Sal. Fred, you don't need him. Sal, Fred was yelling at you. I know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Peace and love. Peace All right. love. Thanks, guys. Bye. That's uh, Sal. Yeah, that was good. Boy, yeah. Riley fucked himself. <laughs> <laughs> Gave us too much tape. <laughs> All right. Well, let's hope it works out. I do like Riley on the channels, and maybe talk to I me after too. the show. Okay. Well, like I said, I really believe no. there needs to be a cooling off period. You know, no. maybe not talk to Riley for a, a week or two until he calms down. All right. All right. Anyway, uh, there's so much to get to this morning. 
Because he uh, sounds a little Mel Gibson out, if you know. What I mean. Speaking of Mel Gibson, I was going to just mention him. I mean, this is the greatest story. Now on the front page of the Post is Mel Gibson partying with two broads. He was yeah, the guy with eight kids and yeah. a wife, and he's yeah. so Catholic. Yeah, Mr. This Catholic. Guy, this guy is so fucked up. The bleary-eyed star was spotted at celeb-studded Moon Shadows restaurant with a babe on each arm and a beer bottle in the right hand late Thursday and into the wee hours Friday. God. Uh, Reveler said Gibson admitted that he had been, you know, first of all, here is a guy who is the luckiest fuck in the world. Uh, mediocre actor. Yeah, born with a great face. Born good looking. Okay, admittedly a fucked up father. Father is a Holocaust denier, loves getting on the uh, telephone and spewing out to anyone. So he was raised by a maniac. But here's a guy, puts out a movie, one of the worst movies ever made, and it makes six hundred million dollars because the religious kooks in this country just and want... all over the world i was reading something the other day that said in arab countries it sold out everywhere they really hate jews it did very yeah. well it was really a jew hating film <laughs> and uh you know gibson you know was hinted that he was anti-semitic he denied it so now this moron goes into a car and in front of cops starts spewing out his Jew hating shit. Right. And finally everyone knows who he is. Even Barbara Walters, who, you know, is pretty much milquetoast, said she will never, ever interview him again. Uh, uh, no, never go to a movie of his again. No. Kind of, you know. And I'm saying never go to a movie of the guy. How about when you see him out, you shun him. Right. If you believe that he's a vicious racist. I mean, fuck him. And I, I got, I took a lot of shit on the air because I said the guy's a vicious fucking anti-Semite, and a lot of people gave me shit for it. But uh, I'm glad to be proven right. What is this? Mel Gibson singing on Gary P Preview page one. Hmm. How do we have that? Uh, the cop who arrested him was James Mee, and you see a picture of him. And uh, I mean, there's nothing there that would indicate Jew. And uh, Mel Gibson could spot him right away. Yeah, I looked at the picture and I was like, "What made him think that he was a Jew?" Wait, the the cop really was Jew. Yeah, yes, he, oh, he wow. was. Gibson is good at spotting <laughs> Jews. I'll give him that. Which is the first uh, he, he could have been Hitler's right hand you man with that skill. Yeah. No. If he ever is available to do this show, we have a game we can play with him. Yeah. You know, you put a Jew in a cop uniform, it's kind of hard to tell he's a Jew oh, unless he's got you know the tallest and the payest and the and the. And, and when do you ever see that? When do you ever see a Hasidic cop? I go with Italian first, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Jewish. Uh, let's see. After he left the, the club, at one point, Gibson switched to drinking water, put his head in his hand, saying, quote, I am drunk. You know shit. Recall. Yeah, well, he had been drinking wine earlier at dinner, according to the article, and then switched to beer. Yeah. Some people begged him not to drive. He said, no, I'm fine. I'll take care of myself. A Los Angeles Sheriff's deputy busted the road warrior in his 2006 Lexus going 87 miles an hour in a 45-mile-an-hour zone shortly after 2.30 in the morning Friday. A bottle of tequila was found in his car. Yeah, he wasn't finished. After the beer, he had tequila in the car. Gibson tested at 0.12%. Blood alcohol level cops said California law considers drivers at 0 0.08 to be impaired. So 0.12 is pretty high, right? Yeah, definitely. What was your worst uh, arrest? DUI. I'm trying to think, uh, one point something, definitely. I, I think it was, uh, when I got a DUI originally, I was like 1.9. Wow. No, you, you, make you, Gil, were... you make Mel Gibson look like a piker. How are you awake? Got comments about today's Howard Stern Show? Call in 888 Stern 100. 888 Stern 100. The wrap up show with John Hyde and Gary Delavate. Exclusively on Howard 100 and Howard 101. Show. Make your voice heard. Call in 888-STERN-100. 888-STERN-100. So when I was in the barrel of the rain, whooping motherfuckers asses that look like you. Yeah, we'll try it now, O'Reilly. This is why you think you are. Ronnie, try it now. Hey, motherfucker, try it now. You talk a big game, but you're not proving anything yet. No. You have not proven yourself, Riley. My darling. And you're, what's that? Look, my darling. Oh, no, I'm trying nice. to add to your organization, not take away. And we love the fact that you're trying to add to the organization, but there is a protocol here. When I got hired in radio, I was making $150 a week. Hey, Fred. Fuck you. Fuck what, you. me? <laughs> Fred. What I'm saying is... I was getting fucked, but I knew that that's what it took to get into the business. Does Fred know these are... No, I think he thinks he's talking to Riley. 
you guys don't. Oh, want really, to Fred? <laughs> did you hear what I'm I said? Sorry, Fred. Sorry. Look at me, Fred. Look at me. <laughs> that was Fred, good. Look at me. This is a guy playing clips of Ryan. <laughs> oh damn! I and thought I was getting somewhere. Welcome back to the wrap up show. Uh, now, now I gotta tell you, I gotta defend Fred on that. I was winning. Shit, I know. You had to see the shit eating grin on Sal's face while that was getting replayed. Oh, that's okay. Sal, you want to talk about black people again? No. Okay. There you go. I gotta defend or about Fred. The stalking episode. Huh? No. I gotta defend Fred on that one because I did not hear the part where Howard said it was clips either. Because I was listening I... to a lot of stuff this morning, and I, I what happened was this was going on. I'm just sitting at my desk, you know, writing or whatever. And Will came in and he goes, "Do you know what's going on?" I go, "Yeah, Fred's fighting with Riley." He's like, "No, no, no. These are clips." And I don't know if it works so well because you, because Riley never makes sense. You probably hit any button and no, it's funny. Um, oh, that's what pretty much just like what a what a typical Riley exchange would go. <laughs> I isolated Riley's argument yesterday to do some prank calls. So when I isolate them, I put everything in order and then I practice it for about. That's what me and Richard do. We practice for about a half hour, so we get everything pretty much in order. And it was it was pretty simple with Fred because it was the same argument as yesterday. It was so funny. So everything fell into place. Now you got to give, you gotta so give Sal credit there. That was That's good. good. I didn't even know really Sal funny. was doing that. I thought it was Riley arguing with Fred too. I, I'm you know right what? If he said, Sal. I swear, at he the said it real of quick. He did. I I, he happened, said, I probably would have fell for it too, but I heard Howard sort of say it quickly. I I thought I swear to God I thought he said that this is not tape. This is really Riley on the phone. Yeah. Because usually when Riley calls in, yeah. I try to like go for other things like other music pieces or. Or little Riley sound bites and stuff like that, so I probably wasn't giving my full attention to that. You know what's great though, Let's too. Just say it. I'm 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 worse than Gary the Retard. So. But no, no, you know what's great about it, Fred, is 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 it? You know, when it comes to doing practical jokes or anything like that, it seems near impossible to fool like a you or a Robin. I, and usually and, do because there was somebody that well, Sal tried it the other day with the Artie phone call, and I knew it was like either somebody impersonating Artie, but it, it just didn't sound real. Well, in the but back, I just I just I was not paying attention, and I just got caught. In up. the back, it went something like. This. First, it was like okay. Then we realized it was clips. They were like, "Oh, Fred's just playing along with this." I was like, no, "I wish he's not playing along with this. He's really buying into it." How long is it going to go? And Sal, you take a lot of crap. You did an amazing job on that. I got to give Thanks. you a ton of credit. And, and you will get more crap, but you did do good. <laughs> and I think That's Jim, okay. I think Jim McClure said before, he's like, you know, Fred hardly talks on the show, and when he talks, it ends up being to clips of Riley <laughs> Martin. Again, if there was, and some, it sucks because I really want Riley to stick around, but he's just being a jerk. If, if there was some sort of introduction speech for working here that there isn't for for like. Staff. It, it, the first rule would probably be: Look, if you get a chance to make one of your coworkers look ridiculous, take it. <laughs> well, I mean, that is the whole premise of the show. <laughs> <laughs> to day one. To Fred's defense, I called in just what Riley clips to argue with Howard, and here I am working the board. And then Fred came on, so it just basically continued. It wasn't like I could stop and run in and say it was me. And I thought Howard was going to say it, but he let you oh, roll. Oh, it was funny. It was funny. I wish it was the real Riley. Yeah. Steve in Middlesex, New Jersey, you're on a wrap-up show. Hey now, everybody. Um, I, I want to nominate this, this exchange with Fred and the fake Riley as the funniest moment since you've been on Sirius. I was dying cracking up. The best <laughs> part is when uh, Fred's like... Uh, um, uh, well, well, what do you mean? What do you mean you don't want to work here? And Riley's like, oh, fuck you. And Fred, all serious, he goes, Riley, there's a problem with questioning and answering here. And, and it's just ridiculous non sequiturs coming from Riley. I don't think you can get much of an argument here, there, Steve. <laughs> it's number two but to, behind Gary getting shot in the eye by the porn star. <laughs> <laughs> Huggy Bear and me. You You're on a wrap up show. Hey, now. I just wanted to say, I too, I just lost it when Fred was arguing with Riley like that. That was the funniest thing I ever heard. You know, because so many people on the show missed it, I wonder how many people in the audience heard Howard say it was clips. Because if you didn't hear him, you really would fall for it. Oh, you know? absolutely. Oh, yeah, it sounded just like... I so really you heard the you heard Howard say it was clips, sir? You heard that? No, I didn't hear that either, and I just I thought it was really Riley yelling at oh. him. I thought it was so funny. That, that's a good question. I wonder how many people in the audience thought the same exact right. thing. It's the way Howard. Well, let's not uh, tell them. <laughs> it's, it's basically the way Howard worded it. He said, "You know what? I could just argue with clips all day. It's always the same thing." Mm. So I can see somebody perceiving that Howard just said, "We could just." I, put I just wasn't paying attention. And I, just, I just got hooked right into it. Forget S it. Sal and Richard, was that the best instance of? like a clip conversation that you've had yet, or are there others that compare to that? No, I'm going to go with Wendy the retard this morning because five people stopped by to visit her. Yeah, who, who did Wendy talk to, Richard? Five people. Who did Wendy talk to during that call? It started with the voicemail operator. Yeah. Then who, it was Ronnie, right? And then it went to Ronnie. And then Dice. it went to uh, Mike Walker. Right. Then Dice. No, and then, then the preacher. Crazy preacher. Oh. And then uh, Dice finished Five it people. Up. And Fuck you, 
nigga. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> that I, guess I mean African American. I guess Mel Gibson will hire her. <laughs> that whoops was great. Uh, we don't have a lot of time left, so I want to shift gears real, quick, uh, real quickly. Teddy, can you hit number three? This is Robin telling us about a school she's going to attend. Can you imagine? Uh, what happened was Robin said she was going to take driving lessons at one of those racing schools, Skip Barber or something like that. Does this come as a surprise to anybody in this room? No. I don't know what she's no. up to. I mean, I said today she's just like, she's doing anything she can to put herself in harm's way. Can she take Bubba on the on the race course, do you think? Absolutely. Is, first of all, let's go around the room and let's be really up front. Is, is, is race car driving a sport? Or is it just, I mean, you drive it's around a really skill. It's certainly a skill. I, I, I guess, but. You gotta be brave uh, to do it. That's I mean, the other thing. You, it's like, you gotta be willing scary. to, like, put your foot on the, on the pedal how and go as fast as you can. How do you classify a sport? I mean, I know there's people competing, but I mean, to like, go, is, is golf the sport? Well, yeah, because you have to practice it to hit the ball and get it in the hole. Do you really need to practice to drive around a track really fast? Yes. Yeah, I yes, guess you do. You know. we do. And uh-huh. live. Absolutely. As the, as the board immediately lights no, up. No, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking like, if Bubba gets on the track and Robert gets on the track and she puts her foot down on the pedal harder and breaks last, she'll probably beat him. Yeah, I but think there's skill in There's a little more skill than I mean, what, no. what, what is the skill, actually? What Gary just said, I mean, if you just go fast, what's the skill? But if you're, like, if you're going straight, that's one thing. If you're like doing quarter mile racing, but if you've got to go around a track that has turns and whatnot, you've right. got to know where the apex is, you've got to know when to put on the brakes, you've got to know when to put on the gas because right. it's not as simple as it looks. And this is going to sound a little sexist, but how many women drivers are there in NASCAR? So. Well, they're just starting I'm, to break in now. They've been held back by all you well, rednecks. I'm, bo- I'm, I'm <laughs> both. That's right. I, well, well, I was in well on one circuit, you got Danica Patrick, right, who's huge on the indie circuit. And, and then I just got to uh, pitch the girl I'm pitching in the meeting tomorrow who's big on the, what's the, um, what's the that street car thing, I guess, where you just go straight? But uh, it's whatever that is. She's like 20 years old. She's pretty right. cute. Richard, I'll take it a step further. I mean, how many intelligent women are there? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Right? I mean, come on. Oh. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. Mel Gibson's on line three. I have a question for Gary. <laughs> yeah. Gary, being that this is such a dangerous sport, do you think Howard would intervene if it really came down to it and said, Robin, I prefer you don't do this? No. Really? Absolutely not. He's not wow. a father. He's not. A, he's not yeah. No. I mean, he might say to her, hey, Robin, what are you doing? I'm worried about you. But he would never say... I would rather you not do it. He's not her father. I, I think Robin's just having the time of her life. Right. She's, she's single. She's got no kids. She's got a, a good amount of money. I think she's... She's in a place where she can do shit. Living you know? like she's young, you know? Uh, well, not that she's old, but I mean, she's just living, having a great time and, and, and loving life. I I envy her spirit yeah. a little bit. I wish I had that kind of energy and to go out and just do whatever I wanted to and have a blast like that. She's got so much energy to travel. I was going to say the it, truth of the matter is these are the, I realize now Robin's doing the things you should be doing. I mean well, that energy yeah, is but anybody that's in a race young, car. I mean well, that's the thing. I'm just I'd rather just sit back like a fat slob and get drunk. <laughs> I should be out that's skydiving. Sport. Exactly. Sport. But Artie, would you write thank you notes? I mean, uh, the whole thank you note thing, I don't know, I, I guess. <laughs> what did, yeah, where did you guys come down on that? I mean, the, the page 69 broke that story, and Robin seemed to take a little offense to it, as did Howard, for that matter. That would be Jason on 69. Mm, yeah. I th- I, listen, what? I thought it was weird. If you give somebody uh, uh, a gift, it wasn't a gift. Like, if you if you show up to somebody's house with a bottle of Jack Daniels, I don't think you expect a thank you note. But if you show up to somebody's house with a housewarming gift, you would think that you would get a thank you. If it's, it's not if it's a housewarming right. gift, I guess. Yeah, sure. I think what people were most upset about was that Howard was coming down right. on people for not writing a thank you note to Robin for the party, and some people who had given her gifts were like, "Well, we didn't even get a thank you note for the nice gifts we gave her." So that's what that's the rumblings. Page sixty nine. So it's picked a wash. It's a wash. You say, Fred? It's a wash. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, let's go to uh, let's go to Bobby in Cleveland. Bobby, you're on the wrap up show. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. Hey, Artie, I was wondering, um, do you know where in Cleveland you're going to be for your tour? Oh, yeah, actually, you know, it's funny. You're calling about this. I just uh, I just booked it. I'll be in, Cle- in Cleveland at the Palace Theater September 9th. Oh, Artie? All right, and I wanted to know, um, I-, I would love to pass out flyers for it. <laughs> I, work, I work downtown Cleveland, and I go to a lot of the bars down here on the weekends, and I want, I'd love to do it for free. Well, go ahead. I mean, you know, just just go to bars and tell everybody uh, Artie Lang Palace Theater in Cleveland, September 9th. And if you do that, uh, let me know. And when you show up to the show, I'll give you $100. No. <laughs> uh, maybe a beer with hey. you after a show or something. Yeah, well, come by. You know what? Uh, call tomorrow and leave your name. If you come to the Palace, I'll I'll, I'll have a beer with you. Sure. Artie, I, I got a question for you about the Carnegie Hall show. Yeah. You were saying that it's your show. You can do whatever you want. 
So of course now I think a lot of people. It's going to be a high profile show. A lot of people are going You're to start stared at me. Hit, right hit you up. Do you feel? Do you feel the pressure to say, hey. "Hey, it's Carnegie Hall. I'm going to step it up a little bit. Maybe I'd rather have a Nick DiPaolo and a Colin Quinn right. rather Shut than up, a Sal." Gary. No, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, do you, are you? I don't know. I mean, it's <laughs> funny. Like, uh, I I really am nervous about it because it's a big spot and. Um, if I had been doing it three years ago where I had all the material sort of still fresh from it's the whiskey talking to be easier, but I'm going to try to do newer stuff. So I'm just worried about the set I'm going to do. Right. I haven't even thought about who I'm hiring yet. To, Blue to Irish. I, I will tell you that if you put Sal on the opening bill, then you don't have to worry about him being in the front row. Going, <laughs> I don't know. Some people might. I don't know. Sal, would you want to do a gig like that? Is oh, that no, something not Sal. Sal. You, you've been so kind to me in the past. Let me be the least of your problems on this. Just take care of your show. I well, don't I, mind. I, I, great, I, great move. I'll, I'll let you know. I'm not kidding you. I'll, I'll let you know. Hi, you know. this is Sal Governale. I really don't want to be on stage at Carnegie Hall. With <laughs> no, Arnie. no. All right, no, you're about please. to get you're about to get a ton of offers. One to open for you, and two to do any kind of promotion if, for beer league. So <laughs> have fun. All right, we got to wrap up. Thanks, everybody. Artie, where are you going to be? Uh, there's a beer league premiere party at the Rail in Boundbrook, New Jersey, August 10th. That's it. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the wrap-up show on Howard 100 and Howard 100. Uh, by the way, in the paper today, there is an explanation about, uh, it's in Cindy Adams' column, about uh, Dave Chappelle from Comedy Central. As an explanation again? Yeah, and th th actually, it's the clearest explanation I've ever heard. I think he's still working on it, and it gets clearer as time goes on. But of all people, Cindy Adams at Alta Caca to figure out what's going on. Here's the explanation, and I'll boil it down uh, for you. Yeah, for those of you who are Dave this, Chappelle yeah. fans, she says that Dave Chappelle, when he was shooting his Comedy Central show, the Dave Chappelle show, that he simultaneously was doing a lot of work with inner city kids. Right. And he would go with a group of people, and they would talk to the kids about being role models, you know, about that he was a role model, and all these guys were role models, and how to uplift yourself, and how to, you know, um, uh, have pride in yourself, whatever it is, one of these groups that uh, helps people. Mm -hmm. And while he was doing the show, that, uh, you know, he came to feel every time he did a sketch, was were people laughing with him or at him, and was he being a... Uh, like a step and fetch it, uh, blackface comedian, or was he really doing something that these kids could be proud of, mm -hmm. and was he being a hypocrite? As he began working, he started to feel, now, whether you consider this a crazy explanation or not, I'm not making judgments, I'm just telling you what he says in this Cindy Adams column. So while he was doing this, as he started to do these sketches, he started to believe that he wasn't proud of what he was saying to these kids and in terms of what he was doing for a living, that somehow he was denigrating man. a black man. Mm -hmm. And finally, he started to feel that all of the people who were telling him he was great were not great because what he was doing wasn't great. Mm -hmm. It was this denigrating stuff. So they were actually not on his side. Now, this is what was going through his head. A lot and of so shit. he decided to walk away from it all. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't feel he could face those kids wow. with what kind of comedy he was doing. And in fact, he said the breaking point was he was doing a sketch in blackface, sort of making a, I guess, a joke about, you know, old, uh, old Negro uh, shows. Like a minstrel show. Like show, a minstrel yeah. show. And he said, uh, I don't feel good about this. And wow. people are, la are they laughing at me? And he got into this whole weird thing. So that is the explanation. Do you think that is any more clear, Robin? I think <laughs> you may have something there. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, don't know Dave's either. not talking to us. No. Are we the friends he's shunning? No, in fact, I never liked that show. So I should be the one friend he has. But, I mean, we haven't heard from him since this whole thing happened, and since he hasn't talking to his old friends, I guess we're in that group. You know, I could almost, on a much smaller level, relate. To, like, when I used to do sketch comedy, like at Mad TV, there's times where I would get a sketch, and I would say to myself... And they laughing at me because I'm a fat guy in some sort of crazy outfit. Yes. Or, or were am I? Were you betraying all fat people? No, I was. In my, in my, in my head, I'm going, you know, fuck these people. They're of course, exploiting when you're a comedian, you're you're being laughed at in a sense. Right. Of course, you're exploiting the way you look. You're using your physical presentation right, to make people it's all laugh. Part of it. But uh, I would say to Dave that you know, look, talk about how you can't think of a better role model for kids. Here's a guy created a show. He's a writer. He's clearly of superior intelligence Here, to, to most people. He's 
He's doing something creative. Ad Chappelle became a Comedy Central star. These roundtable discussions about helping the black community began to eat at him. He began to sense what he was doing career-wise was not good for the black community. His posse kept reinforcing how great he was, but one day he noticed a white guy laughing at him, not with him, at him. Chappelle suddenly started saying things like, quote, I have to find out, am I dancing or am I shuffling? Shuffling meaning like, you know, you're part of the old mystery yeah, show. Yeah, you're stepping fetch it. On his very last TV show, he played blackface with a red suit and white lips. That's when it absolutely clicked in what he was doing. That's when he realized he was shuffling. That's when he walked away from the show. That's when he split for Africa. Go ahead, Gary Delabate. What do you want to say? I was going to say that he did almost come in here one day. If you remember, they called yes. at like 11, and he was in the neighborhood. Right. But after that, it's been really, it was really hard to get a hold of him. And I've made a lot of requests. And I know he's been to New York since and has not mm -hmm. contacted us. Mm -hmm. But he almost came in. The other rap against him, by the way, which I've heard some comedians talk about, is that he does like a lot of racial humor that he can only do because he's black. In other words, if a white guy did those jokes... You know, and some people have said it's almost like the easy way out. You know, do you follow what I'm saying? No. I'm not really. I just want to know where Bubba is. Aware of his comedy. <laughs> Bubba will be calling in. All right, Casey, you're on the air in Las Vegas. Hey man, I wanted to ask you guys if uh, you'd ever have Mel Gibson on again. Not only would I have Mel Gibson on, I'd We're blow a donkey to now. get him on. Are you We're kidding? To get him I would now. absolutely want him on. In We're... fact, I was thinking that would be the place. This is the place to oh, apologize. Yeah. If he really wants to be forgiven, yeah, you got to apologize. You. Apologize to the Jews. <laughs> he can yeah. apologize to every Jew here. That's right. Hey Artie, and there's plenty of them around here. <laughs> um, well, Artie, yeah. Hey, can I get a DVD from you? <laughs> Stop it. Stop begging. Yeah, if you leave your number, make sure you leave your number with the guy. Hang on, and I'll definitely send you one. All right, you don't have to feel compelled, Artie. Artie has this strange thing that goes on where he feels that he must well, what am I gonna do? give uh, to everyone. Well, he, he asked for a DVD. But that's, that's what Jackie ruled. He was like, fuck you, buy one. <laughs> no, no. Uh, you know what? You are wants? selling the DVD. If you go to Artie-Lang.com, yeah. they are available for sale. Oh, there you go. If he hangs on them. All right, listen, now it's time for some fun. Oh, no, there are dope. three guys around here who are constantly arguing who is the biggest Stern fan. You got Sal, you got Richard, and you got Richie from Howard TV. Okay. Richie from Howard TV sent me a, a, a note and said, I want to play those two fucks. And we'll find out who is the biggest fan. Now this is interesting. I mean, I think it's I think it's Richie. I really do. Richie I'm, from I'm, In Demand. I'm fascinated to know how much Phelan knows because Phelan's not in this round. Yeah, he, he might be in the next round. Oh, we end up changing. I heard Brian round. might be in. Zero so tears. But, uh, Richard, Sal, and Richie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Richard. And Richard and Sal, come in, please. Why Richard and Sal? Why not Phelan? Oh, uh, I, I said to you, you said oh, you wanted Richard and Sal in this game. No, I mean, uh, whoever, whoever is the, the the most adamant about knowing stuff. I don't want a guy in here who says he doesn't know No, they stuff. all say that. They, they, oh everyone's my adamant. God. Uh, so Richard is Why is he making Our He claims he, he can psych out his competition. Our Why? Sir. Dude, I'm trying to fucking eat, man. Honestly. I'm, I'm Guys, aggravated. go sit at the table. Yeah, you get behind that desk there, you. Oh. And by the way, well, explain it, and then I'll tell you some weird stuff that happened this morning. I'm throwing right, out my sandwich. First of all, let's uh, throw out that chair he's sitting. Richard, you're nude. Why is that? Do you want to explain? Uh, these headphones in here, aren't working. Hold on one second. Perfect. Yeah, I just want to psych it, psych these guys out. Right. All right. So I you... think they won't be able to concentrate if they're staring at my pecker. Well, right. I can't. And what is written on your stomach? Stand up so I can read yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't see that. Suck this, Sal and Richie. All right, there it is, and you're completely nude. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. Uh, Richie from uh, Howard TV, for those of you who don't know, Richie, how long have you been working on the show? Nine years. Nine years. And you say you know more about the show than any of these people. I used to sleep on the streets for the book signings and stuff before I started working here, so I was a huge fan. Who right. knew that? I didn't yeah. know that. Gary, have him fired. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to, oh, by the way, the picture of Artie's sandwich is on the website. <laughs> While I was talking about healthy eating, uh, you can see what... Uh, now you got to get rich about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Richard Christie, why do you think you would know a lot? Is this a shtick, or do you really... You were, no, you were I, did, a fan. I was a huge fan for years and years. I listened every day to the whole show. I taped the show every day All and right. would listen to it back. I was an electrician, so I listened to the show while I was working. All right, but does he think there'd be some lapses in his memory? Because he was touring Europe sometimes with those bands. No, but I would still... I had friends tape the show, and I'd yeah. still hear it when uh, I came uh, back, yeah. And, uh, Sal, uh, did you, you, you listened for years. I mean, yeah. you really feel you know stuff. 
You better believe it. All right. Now, what is he dressed up for? What, do you, what is that you're wearing? War paint. Like when you go to a football game, you put on the colors. I'm wearing the colors of Hal Stern. All right, we're playing oh, for... Yes. Uh, i got to ask you a question. So Sal's wearing war paint on his face, and he's got that Howard Stern fist and logo on his chest. Is it appropriate? And Sal, how many times have I had this conversation with you? Sal had an intern painting him, a female intern painting his chest, and I don't really want you having in female interns touching your nipples. She didn't. I touched my nipples. No, but why couldn't you get why couldn't someone else do it? Why did it have to be I wanted a, Okay, I wanted I asked Steve the intern to do it and he was working on the phones and she walked by and on camera Why don't you ask me next time? Okay. I just right, I don't think it's Gary. an intern's job. All I'm right. sorry, guy. I would have well, done it. Sal too. wants contact with the interns in the worst way. In the worst way. Yes, he, that is true. Yeah, and you need to be quarantined. Yes. Honestly, like a caged dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get down to it. You three are playing for five hundred dollars cash and a copy of Madden NFL two thousand and seven from EA Sports. Oh, you could keep that one. Madden NFL two thousand and seven in stores August twenty second. Rated E for everyone. Why? Everyone told me you'd want this. I want the money. All right. Give it to your kids. All right, just to make it interesting, we have five hundred dollars. We'll see who the winner is. Nice. Once again, to remind you, Richie from On Demand, who's wearing normal street clothes. Yeah, how fucked up is it? I'm the most normal looking one. I know. And, uh, of course, Richard Christie, who's wearing a fez, and he's totally new, Dude, uh. aside from that. And Sal, the stockbroker, who is in war paint, painted on by an intern. All right. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is write down your answers. Okay. And um, the first question is, what was product X? What was product X? Write down your answer quickly. Uh -oh, now, these are tough. These are trivia questions about the Howard Stern Show. If you want to play along at home, Product X. See how many you can answer. What was Product X? There was a Product X on the show. It was Artie, called, you're a big fan. It was called. Do you know this one, Artie? I actually did not know this. Product X had to be named Product X for a very good reason. Hmm. I'll give you a little hint there. All right, Richard's still writing. Uh, Richie, uh, everyone put their pens down. Time is up. And I'm going to go to um, Sal, the stockbroker, first. What do you have? What is Product X, Sal? Well, I was thinking Mr. X. So Robin's, Mr. X's penis, Product X. <laughs> All right, that's wrong. You obviously didn't know. Hold up your piece of paper and tell me what's written on there. Sphincterine. Sphincterine was not the right answer. Sphincterine is a product that got its fined by the FCC. You're that's absolutely right, right about yeah, that, but it was right. not it's called not Product X. X. I'm going to go to Richie from On Demand. I was thinking Snapple. No, you all got it wrong. What happened is I started a uh, phone line, a 1-800 type phone line, a 1-900, and uh, it's where fans could call me and hear these incredibly dirty messages and uh, routines. And uh, I had to call it Product X because um, the Infinity Broadcasting did not want me talking about it. Mm. I don't have any wow. recollection of that at all. Oh, I do. Wow, that's a that was very wow. good. Yeah, I thought Snap was product uh, product X because there was that <laughs> back in the day. And that's what I wrote yeah. first. Too. No, yeah. it was not Snap. <laughs> so they were all writing, but none of them got it right. All right. None of them got it right. You all have zero. Nice. Let's go to the next question. In 1987, on whose answering machine did Howard Stern leave a car crash sound effect? Oh. This 1987, on whose answering machine did Howard Stern leave a car crash sound effect? This is real show history from real fans. Now, this one you should know if you're a real fan. This is tough stuff. Do you know this, Robin? No. I know this. Can I say I have a guess. No, but I have a guess. Don't say it. This is a uh, uh, guys. I'm gonna ask you to put down your pens. When their pens are down, I'm gonna go to Richard Christie first. Hold up your piece of paper when you answer. What does it say? Say you Gar gotta talk. Gary about. Busey. Gary Busey. That is wrong. No, no. I'm gonna go to uh, Richie from Howard TV. I'm go thinking ahead. just because of the car crash. Sam Kinison. Wrong. Yeah. And Sal, the stockbroker, who says he's a super oh, fan. Andrew Dice Clay. Wrong. Can I say it, Howard? I'm gonna go, go ahead. I'm going to blow your minds. Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick. Oh, that's oh. right. He had a car accident in Ireland. That's he, a famous one. There was a fatal injury, and I called up and left a car crash on wow. his uh, answering machine, and that's why I hope I never run into him. That's right. <laughs> and you all about it. You insulted Jennifer Grey as well. I insulted everyone I could. Who wrote these questions? They're good. That's right. It was Jennifer Gray. That's right. Who was yeah, insulted she, was she was in the car with him. This is before he married Sarah Jessica Parker. You're absolutely right, Artie. Put one on the board for Artie. He might walk away with the five. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So far, nobody has scored a point. But like Robin, I have no recollection of that, recollection of that product. product that too. I thought the second question was a, a slam dunk, easy one for you guys. Here's your third question. What Turns was... out they're not much of wow. uh, uh, fans really? at all. What was Howard Stern's reported annual salary when he worked at WCCC in Hartford? Now, Sal should know this one because he keeps track of everything in my life. Right. Richard Christie claims he's been WCCC listening. WCCC in Hartford? WCCC in Hartford. What was Howard's reported annual salary? I see Richie from Howard TV having a struggle. I see Richard Christie having a struggle. I see Sal writing quickly. They're all guessing. Okay, I'm going to ask you to put your pens down. I mentioned it many times on the air. Let's go to uh, Richie from E, uh, rather not E, but Howard TV I'm first. I'm taking just a guess, 14000 a year? 14000 is wrong. Sal, the stockbroker? 22000 a year. Wrong. Let's go to Richard Christie. Oh, you mean annual. I put, oh, one, I put 195 a week. Well, you could have done it either way, but all of you are wrong. It's $12,000 a year, which would work out to about $250 a week. I got the two right. I've mentioned it many, close. many times on the air that I made $250 a week. I wish that O'Reilly was here right now. Uh, look here, man. Uh, $250. Uh, I ain't going to cover jack shit. Uh, okay. And he's doing an hour. You were doing five shows a week. All right. Here's an easy one. If you don't get this one, I think we should shut the game down. What do you think of that? You guys are all... Yeah, you're awful. We suck. All stupid. <laughs> well, we know it's stupid. I am in a club in New Jersey. I just ordered chicken parmesan. The audience is chanting, Howard, Howard, where am I? Now, this I know. Well, I would hope so. I can't make it any easier than this that. This I know, too. <laughs> Let's go to the guys. They're scribbling. Sal is riding. Richard Christie's Richie. riding. Richie Wilson from Howard TV is relaxing. There, looking at you. I think he scribbled something. I there. did. He did. Oh, he did. All right. All right. I'm going to go to... Put your pens down. Sal, hold up your sign and tell me what you have there. Rascals Comedy Club. Wrong. Let's go to Richard Christie. Oh, no. I wrote the same thing. Sal. Oh. Yeah. Well, let's go to Richie Wilson. I don't know if I spelled it like Club Benet. Club Benet is right. Yeah. You're finally oh. in the uh, Come on, guys. Sal, you're awful. You don't know Club Benet? Club Benet, we did tons of live shows. We even threw a prom there, if you remember. It's legend. What's with you guys, Howard Stern experts? I'm going to ask Sal and Richard to give up their seats and let uh, Brian Failing get in here. I mean, you're doing horribly. I want to sit These there. are hard questions. They just wanted to come in no. naked, I think. I see. We could do that anytime, Robin. <laughs> Richie, you're on the board. No, you don't can't. Be, you, you have... Uh, uh, one point. The other two guys have zero points. All right. All right. Here we go. Who did Howard tie up on Comedy Tonight in 1985 and stuff a red S&M ball in his mouth? I know this, too. That was an Jeez. easy one. Anybody who's a fan would remember that period of time where I was fired from NBC. I had to go on television to get my word out that I was appearing at uh, different live clubs, Club Benet, as a matter of fact. And in 1985, I went on this gentleman's show. How did Howard tie up on Comedy Tonight in 1985 and stuff a red S&M ball in his mouth on camera, and he banged his head on the floor? I'll even give you that. Uh, I think he bled a little. Bit. And he bled on TV, and I took over the whole show. Let's put our pens down right now. Let's go to Richard Christie first. Richard, who do you have down on your sheet of paper? Go ahead. David Brenner. David Brenner is wrong. Let's go to Richie from On Demand. <laughs> Bill Boggs? Bill Boggs is correct. You have two yes. points. Yes. Sal, let me see what you have. Bill Boggs. Bill Boggs is right. Sal is yes. on the board with a point. Finally, we get some answers. <laughs> We've got, why are you laughing like a retard? Because my paper says Richard Belzer. Oh, <laughs> sorry. All right, put it down, you have zero. Okay. I'm zero. Still <laughs> Richie Wilson from On Demand, Howard TV, has two points. Sal fessing up to his dishonesty, zero points. And Richard Sal Christie. trying to is. cheat. All right, I'll look at your paper closer. Okay. All right. I love you. Howard. On what late night TV show did Howard's mom make a surprise appearance? Oh. On what late night TV show did Howard's mom make a surprise guest appearance? Come on, guys. Do you remember this one, Artie? My mother came out with me. I That's absolutely so. right. And in fact, I didn't know she'd be there. She, there she was sitting in the chair. I'll give you a hint. It wasn't the Robin Bird show. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask you to put your pens down in three seconds. Three, two, one, let's go to... Richie from Howard TV. What do you have? Wild guess. Tom Snyder? Tom Snyder is wrong. Let's go to Sal the Stockbroker. Letterman? Letterman is wrong. Let's go to Richard Christie. I didn't have to change my paper. David Brenner? David Brenner is yeah. correct. You're on the board. Oh, 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 
In fact, the show was called Nightlife with David Brenner. Go ahead. Okay, Sal, this is why you are genuinely retarded. <laughs> We played this on the Friday show two weeks ago. You sat in that chair and listened to uh, it. How so, do you not know? So Richard shouldn't get the point. Why you should. Not? Well, because he had he, he, he used his brain. Uh, yeah, I remember. Was too. I was, I was you busy have... on the sound effects, Gary. I'm sorry. <laughs> not when we're playing something. He was playing Mike Walker's part. Yeah. Well, if you're a real fan, you'll know this. This will be no problem. Okay. But to a fan who is sort of casual about his listening, well, I don't know. Let's take this question. You guys are coming dangerously close to the end of the game. The contest so far, two points for Richie Wilson from On Demand Television, Howard TV. Richard Christie on the board with one point, Sal with zero. Two one zero. Sal, who claims to have studied everything, Howard. Mm -hmm. What legendary caller did Howard dedicate "Crucified" by the FCC to? What legendary caller did Howard dedicate "Crucified" by the FCC to? Now, in all fairness, I couldn't even answer this question. I forgot. Yeah, I'm trying to think myself. I'm staring at the answer, and it makes perfect sense that I did this, and I'm proud of myself that I did this. I only have a guess. I have a guess too, but I'm not sure. Richie Wilson writing frantically. Put it down. Put the pen down. Let's go to Richard Christie. Richard, what do you have? I guess Captain Jenks. Captain Jenks is wrong. Richie Wilson. I guess demand. Joey Ramone. Joey Ramone is wrong. Let's go to Sal. Ponce Telephone. Ponce Telephone is wrong. Sal, you are still at zero. Robin, what was your guess? Froggy. Froggy is correct. Artie, wow. what was your guess? I got to admit, I was wrong, Jenks. Yeah, it was Froggy. Froggy used to call up. He had diabetes. He died. He died a blind man. He was a great caller. He used to talk like this. I remember. Yeah, I remember. All right. He choked on his own tongue. Poor bastard. I'm going to give you guys... Did he? Yeah, that's how he died. I don't believe you. I swear you to God. Anything right. <laughs> no, he that's was not one of the questions. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is easy. If you're a real Howard Stern fan, if you're not, then you're not going to be able to answer this. Let's find out. Who played keyboard with her tongue and performed oh, the Star Spangled yeah, Banner at U.S. Right. Open Source? Be quiet, please. Who played keyboard with her tongue and performed the Star Spangled Banner at U.S. Open Source? It's easy. It's easy, Why? maybe. If you're a fan. If you're a real fan. This should be a slam dunk. Please put your pens down, and here we go. Let's go to Richie Wilson from Howard TV. Celestine? Celestine is correct. Sal, what did you write? You just whooped it up. Let's hear. Celestine, baby. Let me see that spelling. That's right. Let's go to Richard Christie. I had Jessica Hahn. Wrong. And now the score changes. We have three points for Richie Wilson from Howard TV. One point for Richard Christie. One point for Sal, the stockbroker. Sal, you are on the board. You are right to whoop it up. I dedicate to you, sir. All right. <laughs> you that one point. <laughs> Be proud. Here's an easy one if you're a real Howard Stern fan and you've been listening for years. Lay it on, bitch. What was Ben Stern's favorite come home? What was what? Ben? Come home. <laughs> what was Ben Stern's favorite come home from work time to relax cocktail? What is the name of that cocktail? Oh. So quickly cake. right. Leia. Fred says piece of cake. This Robin is says Leia. Fred says this is the easiest question. What will the answer be? I see Sal scribbling. I see Richie Wilson for me is done. Richard Christie still struggling in this game. His fez is too tight. <laughs> <laughs> Pens have to come down. Richard Christie, I'm sorry, time All is right, up. All right, are we ready? We're going to go first to Richard Christie, who's struggling with this one. What do you have? It's, I think it's Scotch. I put Dewar. Scotch is wrong. You are out of this one, Richie Wilson. What do you say? Rob Roy? Rob Roy is correct, Sal, the stockbroker. Rob Roy! Rob Roy, you're back on the board. Two points for Sal. Four points for Richie Wilson. One point for Richard Christie. Sal doing karate moves. Yes. I heard I flab is blowing my back. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now the game is heating up. How are we doing, Robin? Uh, uh, it's getting better. What is it, Toke? You're getting... The, the questions are getting ridiculously easy That's now. right, oh. Robin. Please. <laughs> uh, Toke, go ahead. Yeah, Howard, how do I get on this game? I got almost everyone right so far. Toke, you should be here playing. Get a job here. Are embarrassing themselves. Make some prank calls. <laughs> here we go. What legendary guest who loved eating sunflower seeds with tomato sauce, left mad one day when he thought Howard was being disrespectful to Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, yeah! The easy oh, one. Please. Don't congratulate yourself. These are the easier ones. They get harder. Okay. You 
were doing so pathetically poorly. <laughs> you in the had beginning. to go to the easy question. I know. I'm trying to make up for my stupidity. Talk. All right, let's go to Sal, the stockbroker first. What's your answer? Tiny motherfucking Tim. Tiny motherfucking Tim is correct. Let's go to Richard Christie. Tiny, Tiny Tim. Tim is correct. And let's go to Tiny Richie Tim. Wilson from Howard TV. Tiny Tim, that's three points all across the board. Four. Four. Excuse me, five points for Richie Wilson, two points for Richard Christie, and three points for Sal, the stockbroker. And now we get to a harder one. Thank you. When Sam Kinison promised to bring John Bon Jovi to the station to make peace with Howard, who was in the studio as a guest that day? When Sam Kinison promised to bring John Bon Jovi in, and of course Sam did not bring in John Bon Jovi, we sat there with egg on our face, totally humiliated, and who was sitting in the studio as our guest that day? Okay. All right. Let's get now, down to it. Can I ask you something? Did you say he brought in a different guest, or there was a random guest? I said, who was the in-studio guest that day? I didn't say he brought in anybody. All right. Take it easy. Jeez. I'm a game show host. <laughs> Uh, Put your pens down, please. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, Sal, quickly. I'll give you one second to scribble. All right, leave it. All right, leave it there. Let's go to Richard Christie first. What did you have? Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert Godfrey is wrong. Richard, are you from? Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers is wrong, Sal. Emo Phillips. Emo Phillips is wrong. The answer is? Robin? I don't remember. Better not be George Artie? Uh, Fred? Man, I'm... David Brenner? No. Penn Gillette. Oh. Wow. Robin's boyfriend. I'm glad I didn't hear it. <laughs> he made such an impression. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now we only have uh, four questions left. Make them now. difficult. All right. Come on. Okay. That was difficult. Here we go. Yeah. This is a tough one. Here you wanted it tough, Robin. We're going to give it to you tough. tough. Mentioned this a couple of times on the air, but did you pay attention? Before Howard worked in radio in Westchester, what ad agency did Howard briefly work for? Piece of cake. Piece of cake for Fred. But what about our panel of oh, so called Howard Stern experts? Hmm. Sal, the stockbroker, with three points. Richard Christie with two points. Richie Wilson from Howard TV, the great Howard TV channel. Five points and in the lead and probably could take this whole thing. I should know this, but I can't think of the name. Even Robin doesn't know this. Put your pens down now. Time is up. By the way, you know time is up because it is arbitrary. I know it. I know it. I got it. First person I'm going to go to is Richie Wilson from Howard TV. What is the answer? I'm just saying Sachi and Sachi. Sachi and Sachi yeah. is wrongy and wrongy. Let's go to Sal the Stockbroker. I just wrote fuck because I'm fucked on this one. All right, let's go to Richard Christie. I Pull it out, baby. I took a guess and wrote Westchester ad agency. Oh, okay. <laughs> you is wrong. The answer is... Benton and Benton Bowles. Bowles. Benton and Bowles, Robin. Very nice. good. Uh, all right, here we go. He's on the planter's account. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You are... That's right, the planter's account. Shows Fred is paying attention, <laughs> even though he did speak to uh, Riley, Martin. Riley Martin's tape yesterday. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna have to do a lot to make up for that one. Here is one all the way back at NBC. Sal, did you listen to the show at NBC? You bet your sweet cock I Richard did. Richard Christie, did you? I have to admit I didn't. Richie Wilson, did you? Yes, I did. All right, two guys have an advantage. An advantage. One guy does not. Here we go. Yes. Who? Who was the newscaster who read the news at WNBC before ah. Robin came into it? Think of his name and you get a point. Sal, the stockbroker, scribbled it down without effort. Who was the newscaster who read the news at WNBC before Robin came? Now, actually... What if he gets it wrong? Uh, I'm going to tell you something. There are actually two answers. Yeah, there should be two answers There could be two this. answers to There's this. There's really one. Well, there is really the one, one, who but literally might... came before? Yeah. Or the one who... No, you can't use the other one. There's, you're there's two who, people. All right. The judge has ruled that thinking. you can only have one in. Really, because I think I know... The one. other one. Yeah. <laughs> let's see who are you. Well, let's see. Victory fight. I could have made this, I could have reworded this question to say who was the first newscaster I worked with at WNBC. Right. But I'm going to leave it the way it is. Who was the newscaster who read the news at WNBC before Robin came? I'm going to go to Sal the Stockbroker. Go ahead, Sal. Neil Seaver. Uh, Neil Seaver is wrong. is wrong, actually. What? Yeah, that's yeah. what you portrayed in private parts. Richie, go ahead. Uh, Richie Christie, go ahead. I just I remember I think we played it on the Friday show, but it was something like Big Bob Phelps or no, something. No, no, no. Let's go to Richie. I just have not George Flowers. Cause it's not right. George Flowers. Oh. If the guy's name you're thinking of is Neil Seavey, and that I would have given it to you. It could no. also have been Judy DeAngelis. Wait, right. But he wasn't Judy. What's the answer, answer though? It's Neil C. Neil C. V. Oh my God! It's a Neil C. Ver. That's, That's not the wrong. answer. But it's not the answer, so. By you the way, suck. Howard, the name that uh, uh, Richard was going for was Big Ron O'Brien. Big Ron O'Brien was a disc mm. jockey who now works in Philadelphia. Oh my God! All right, here we go. 
fucking letter. This is again from the NBC years. And Richard Christie, I know you're at a disadvantage, but these are the questions. Yeah, what yeah. was the name of the group that recorded H-O-W-A-R-D, the theme song for the Howard Stern Show for many years at WNBC is where it started? H-O-W-A-R-D-S-T-E-R-N. left after this, so you've got to get your game in order. It's for $500, courtesy of Madden NFL 2007. I'll also throw in the Madden NFL 2007. In stores August 22nd, rated E for everyone. I'm going to ask you to put down your pens right now. And I'm going to go to Richie Wilson from Howard TV first. What was the name of the group that was recorded? Was it NRBQ? NRBQ is wrong. Let's go to Sound of Stockbroker. The Scoldies? No. The Scoldies is wrong. <laughs> Let's go to Richard Christie. I, I know it's the something like the strike. But... Well, it is the, but not the strikes. The, it is the, the. Go ahead, Robin. Double O zero. The double O zeros mm. later changed the name to the zeros. It's the double O zeros. And uh, it was not NRBQ. NRBQ was a band that I used to play a lot in Hartford. But they never recorded a song for me because I was a double O zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here it is. Your second to last question. The best Sal can do is tie Richie Wilson for a runoff and uh, Richard Christie. I don't think you can He's win out. this one. You're already out of it, but I'll you can try, try along. Anyway. All right. What was Robin's rank in the Air Force? What was Robin's rank in the Air Force? Any real fan would know that. She said it many, many times. Piece of cake, Fred says. Robin giggles. Artie eats. I'm done, but... Did you answer this, Artie? I think I can, yes. All right, let's find out if our panel can. Uh, the, the real answer is whether Sal can do it, and if he can't, then we don't even have to bother with the last question. Sal, what was Robin's rank in the Air Force? Lieutenant. Lieutenant is wrong. The game is over. Richard Christie, what did you have? Nurse. Nurse is not <laughs> right. Anymore, you Captain? Asshole. Captain Quivers. Whoa. You're looking right at her. There she is. Captain Quivers from the Air Force. You win. Well, you know, technically, I was all those ranks, Howard. I had. No, I mean, you no. have to go through the ranks before you get the captain. Well, whatever. Yes, she was. You went through the nurse rank? <laughs> I think we know what we were going for, though. Right, throw <laughs> one more. Then Let's throw that one out. She's all right, right. Throw that one out. Okay, right. here we go. What was the name of Howard's college radio show at Boston University? Ah, there's a good one. Yes, I actually got fired from my first college radio experience. I didn't even know you could be fired if you didn't get paid, but I was fired. I was thrown off the air on the air by a guy named Hank Sennett while I was doing this show. And this, I can't get all the terms of. I remember this. All right, the score is five to three to two with Richie Wilson in the lead. Sal, second place, and oh, Richard I Christie dead last. What was the name of Howard's College Radio Show at Boston University? Put your pens down, Richard Christie. What do you have? The King Schmaltz Bagel Hour. That's the answer we're looking for. Yes. Uh, Richie Wilson. I had nothing. I threw my Nothing, and let's go to Sal. King Schmaltz. All right, you're up to four. You still don't win, though. You still don't win. All right. It's Richie open. Wilson did. Ha. Ha ha. <laughs> Well, if he got four, isn't it possible that he could... Now, if you want to continue on with two more questions. But two he did win. Did Why would Richie, Richie agree to that? <laughs> right. Wait, I should no, have six, though, because I got the were, captain right. He said you there did. were two more questions. We threw out the last question. Are you so, throwing that out? Yeah. All right. Here There's one more question to go. Sorry, Richie. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, Richie's well. got a legitimate picture. Here we he got go. captain right. Who brought Gina Girl to the show to do her Gina oh, dance? Please. Come on. China dance. China dance. Dang, dang, dang. But, but uh, don't blurt out the answer. Keep your uh, answers to yourself, Richie Wilson from Howard TV. Richard Christie, Sal the stockbroker. Richie in the lead by one point. Sal's got four. Richie's got five. Richard Christie nowhere. All right, let's put our pens down. Let's go to um, Richard Christie, even though you're nowhere. What do you got? Well, first I put Gina Man, but then I wrote Al Rosenberg. Wrong. Let's go to Richie Wilson. I had Gina Man. China no. Man is wrong. Oh. Let's go to South Stockbroker. Crazy Jerry. Crazy Jerry. Oh, oh, oh shit. Now he tied it up. Win. All right. Crazy Jerry. All right, look. Here's see, the tiebreaker. Howard, I love you. See All that? Right, here is the, you. Here's the tiebreaker. <laughs> Howard, if I lose, I'll teabag you. All right, here oh, we go. Geez, and this is the tiebreaker. That's a wonderful present for Howard. Let's go to Jay, who wants to say hello to us. Yes, Jay. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, question for you, Howard. Yes. The last thing that these people need is something to win. I mean, I'm in here... You don't know what they get paid. <laughs> but I'm, in, I'm, I'm working my ass off in 110-degree weather. My knee's up to shit. 
And, I, you know, what a game for us sometimes. All right, he's playing for you, whoever <laughs> All right, Jay, I'll tell you what. For a tea bag? I'll tell you what, Jay, I'll let you play on the last question. This last question is a tiebreaker. Either Sal or uh, Richie Wilson are going to win it. I'll tell you what, Jay, I'll give Jay the Madden game, and I'll take the money. All we'll right. split it, Jay, right? All right, how's that? Oh, sweet, sweet, thanks. All, All right. right, and if Sal gets this next one right, I'll also give you $500 cash from the Madden game. All right? Sweet. All right, here we go. Here's your last question. Richie Wilson appeared to win, but I guess he didn't. Well, you were the one who said I'm taking that question off the board. I mean, right. Richie won as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Me oh, too. take it easy. Yeah. It was a technical glitch. Technical glitch. That's right, Lieutenant. <laughs> Here it is, the final question. It's a tiebreaker between Richard... And Sal. Well, yeah, Richie Wilson Richie and, Sal. and Sal. Richard Christie's out of it. You'll play for fun, Christie. Okay. By the way, that... Strategy of yours being naked to intimidate the other guys didn't work. Yeah. You were the one who was intimidated. Wow. In June of 1988, <laughs> Howard sat in for a week as the announcer on Hollywood Squares, mm -hmm. who hosted the show that week, and what regular host did he replace? So you have to come up with two names. Wow. Who hosted I the show? Who hosted Hollywood Squares? And what regular host did he replace? Let's put our pens down. Let's go to uh, Richie Wilson from uh, Howard. Do you think of one named John Davidson? John Davidson is uh, partially right. Uh, it's true that uh, John Davidson was the regular host. He was out, but we and need the who name. Was of, his who was the filling? Yeah. Sal, do you have the answer? John Davidson was the host. Shadow Stevens was your replacement. That is correct. Yes. Yes. And so does Jay on the phone. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, uh, Jay, you've won five hundred dollars cash and a copy of Madden NFL 2007 from EA Sports. Madden NFL 2007 in stores Wait, August 22nd, rated E for everyone. Why you look at my paper? Who gave me Shadow Stevens? You asshole. What'd you say? Uh, no, Rich is like he's looking over. I'm just there. looking at him because he looks like a fucking freak and he thinks I'm cheating or something. <laughs> what did you have on your paper? I wrote Alan Thick and John Davis. All right. So now uh, Richie oh. Wilson from Howard TV did not win. Uh, what is it, Ganji? What do you want to say? I, I can tell you on Sal's paper he did not write down. John Davidson. I did okay. too. Let me say, I did too. No. I wrote John say, on top, replaced Shadow Stevens. But he did have the answer and he said it out loud. Yeah. Yeah. I said John no, Davidson. You said it after John him Davidson. and you said it was partially correct. Sal, you are disqualified. Just no, Thank you. Strike those lights against Scott Davidson. Strike those lights. Right 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 He's out. You're out. Cheater. Cheater. I, I got John written down. How is it put down your pen? But he Why said John you? Davidson. Right. I know. I have it. So it doesn't matter. You well, didn't well, have it. Well, you lose. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right. fine. I'm not going to be a sore loser. If he said John Davidson, it That's means what? you couldn't figure out who the last That's name was. That's why he didn't hold the pen. No, 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 no. Paper, Sal. You're a cheater. What a scum. And I don't like cheaters. You cheated. Thug's in. I got Howard. But after he said it, you said it. Why would you not write the last name? You're right. We believe this. Here's further proof of Sal cheating. He was taking answers. He was writing on one side and turning it around when I wasn't and writing on sure. the other side. And then when he found out the answer, if he picked up Richard or Richard, he Sal. would flip it. No, I was wow. right. No. You've got to have it on your piece of right, paper. Give it to Richard. I have John Richard. Get out of here. Check check paper. Paper. Shame it's on you. Wait, here's a simple thing. I mean, to cheat on, against your fellow workers. How come you lowest Hold on, hold on. Didn't cheat. Why didn't you write down just Shadow instead of Shadow Stevens? Why didn't you write down just Shadow? Gary, I wrote replace Shadow Stevens. But why did you why did you write Shadow's second name? You don't need that, just John and Shadow. And John who? Because, okay, because why? You because you didn't know it. Because Dude, you just fucking cheated for big big time for real. That. What are you fucking crazy? That's a lot of no. weirdness about you. You cheated. Gary. That's why Shadow was Gary. looking at no, you. totally cheated. He Wait cheated. a minute. What are you fucking not? Gary, I wrote replace Shadow Stevens and John then, who? Name. Hold on, let me finish. And then Howard goes, and then I wrote John, and Howard said, put down your pens. No, you should have said, I got it, just let me finish this one. You're a liar, you're a cheater, you're a skunk. What John could this be, you asshole? Here's John, what John could this be? be? John. And you, John also wrote, this... you also wrote on both sides of the page. John Stamos. Right. Right. Two I different answers. Sure. Hey, really? Yes. yes. But it, get out. Uh, and get out of here. Get out. Get out. Get out. You cheated. I did You that. fucking cheated. No, get out. I did it. Bring an editorial. I didn't cheat. Get out. Bring an editorial. I don't need an editorial. Out. 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 By the way, look at the tits on Sal. I didn't cheat. I wrote John out, and I wrote Shadow. Out, 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 out,
throw the cheater Come down on. the well. So yeah. my show can be free. Get out. <laughs> CJ, you're not getting your Madden football game because of these freaks. Because you cheat. You cheated. What? I already I spent that money. I wrote You shows. already spent the money. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, Jay. Um, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you your own Howard Stern trivia question. And if you oh, can answer. Come on, I already won here. No. He well, cheated. How did you win? He cheated. <laughs> All right, you win. I don't care about you as long as Sal doesn't win. Hold on, okay? Richie Wilson wins. Right, thanks. Hold on. Thanks. I got to sell shit on eBay to pay for a train ticket get, to get to this shithole. Wow. You know, I can't even the get The fact that you cheated is unbelievable. I didn't cheat. I'm going to fuck a Sal, I will never have you. Audience, listen to these people. I will people. never listen have you at home. I want the audience to listen I will never have you to my home, ever. Seriously, dishonesty is one of those things that Howard does not tolerate on even the tiniest level. If it were for a penny, whether you're pe dishonest for a penny or a million dollars, it's you ruin dishonest. the game when you that cheat. Was, how many times did he cheat? He cheated. Yeah, that was the guy. Come on, time? Sal. Fess up. Shane, what type Shane, of shit is for real? Look at me and admit you cheated. Mm -hmm. I did and not then cheat. I wrote everything on. I wrote, admit it. I'm you didn't write Davidson. Shit. I'm not going to have you. You said me Davidson in. after he said it. Right, but I wrote John. You said put your John pitch. what? John Stamos. You said you could have scribbled Davidson if you knew it. I swear. We would have even taken D. If you had D, D. Listen, D would have been enough. Still won't admit you cheated. Hold on. You still will not admit you, you cheated. You better fucking believe I you won't. You're a fucking go... cheat. No, listen to me. Out, out, You're painting me like you're cheating. Out, 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 out. He looks like a gay Darth Maul. Look at him. We're not painting you to be a cheater. We'll let a female intern paint you. How would I know? Have you taken stuff from our show to sell it on eBay? Yeah, tons of times. Have you? Yeah, all the time. You have? No. What are you fucking nuts? What are you selling on eBay? I... Nothing on eBay. I said, I got to sell shit on eBay to get a train ticket to get here. Wait, so what are you selling? I'm making kids old shoes that they grow out of. Good, good, good. Listen good, to me. Good, 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 good. Loser, good, loser, good, loser, good, loser, good. loser, loser, loser. Sal, well, you got to fuck cheat, a co worker out of money. Richard, you know, right, right, I admit it. He's a cheat. I admit I cheated. Good, good. good. Thank so you. now I can explain myself. No. I I wrote Shadow Stevens. Yes. How the fuck would I know, which nobody else knew, Shadow Stevens, so you knew Shadow and not Stevens. know John Davidson? Because you forgot his because name. Because you but, forgot, yeah. But I'll I did tell you why. I name. knew Shadow Stevens, but I forgot John Davidson. Mm -hmm. But I wrote, I but Artie, they wrote John. Okay, but what's the odds of me writing Shadow Stevens and John on a piece of paper? Because you couldn't think of Davidson. Look. And then when Richie said it, right. you repeated right. it. Two million Johns in the world. Yeah. You know, I'm not lying. Wait, you know, you're lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. All right, good. I'm lying. I'm a cheater. You're a cheater. Bag. Brian, yeah. go ahead. I yeah, think he right. might have got to look at the questions too, because two of the I drove him home yesterday, and the two of the questions that were on the list today, he asked me. I've yes, been uh, asking uh, which one? Uh, I've been asking tons was, of uh, questions. The news guy, see, who's the see, news guy? See, see, see. I don't know about that, but That's I do so know you stupid. cheated today. Preparing for your Thank test. Thank you. You're done. Can we have an answer? What? Fever wasn't accepted. John shouldn't be accepted. All right, good point. Wait, Phelan makes a good point because Sal was so close to that news name. Right. He yeah, probably heard it wrong. Uh, no, 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 dude, admit to, And then he would, write, huh? he, he would write questions. He would write targets on Artie. the on the paper. And then as, you, as soon as he knew the one was wrong, no, he I didn't. It's when I changed the I when I changed you the answer. No, no, and right. five hundred bucks, you, you sold Artie. your soul to the devil. And first of all, the argument was with the John thing. It wasn't about the paper. Secondly, let's congratulate Jay, who wins five hundred dollars out of the goodness of my heart. And uh, Sal, the stockbroker, is a loser. Richie's a loser. Richie Wilson, congratulations. Richie, you've won $500 cash, a copy of Madden NFL 2007 from EA Sports. Madden NFL 2007 in stores August 22nd, rated E for everyone. This right. is at a least silly not, little game. At least How I'm not a he cheater. cheat in school? <laughs> Good Lord. Wow, Sal. I'm wow, not, that's I'm all sorry. I can say. I just want to apologize. Well, now. you know, he didn't jump up screaming on that one, too, like the other one. Yeah, right, right. 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 Sure. before he uh, going. had to show it. Okay. Can we have Ronnie escort Sal out of the room, please? <laughs> Wendy the retard is probably... Wendy, are you so fed up with Sal? Yes, I am. Why are you upset with him? Because he's a big pussy cheater. Right. <laughs> Even Wendy the retard knows. Yes, I do, Howard. Thanks, Wendy. Go, go to your room, Sal. Right. Well, Wendy, I'm sorry. You know it's not right to cheat, right? No. You it's know that not. honest. You know that honesty is very, very important. Yes, I do, Howard. Yeah, and that's why I really do respect you, Wendy. <laughs> you know, Sal's a big cheater. I think you should kick him in the butt. Yes, I certainly will. I'm very sorry you had to hear that. I'm sorry, Wendy. Sal, you need to quit acting like a two-year-old. 
Wendy, you're a big fan of the show, right? Yes, I am. You could probably answer all those questions. Yes. Why don't, why don't we give Wendy a shot at $500? Yeah, why not? Let's ask her a question that she should know, and uh, we'll see if she can't win some money. You ready, Wendy? Yes. You ready for your question? Yes. Robin, are you ready to come up with one? <laughs> oh, you all right, here question. we go. I got a question. Here we go, Wendy. You ready to play? Yes. What is Artie's last name? Lane. What? What? Uh, Artie Lane. Lane. That's correct. Oh, Wait a minute. Is she saying Lane? Artie. What are you saying? Lane. 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 Ah, that's okay. right. Uh, now, here's your second question. Get this right and you win. Spell Howard. H O W A. R.D. Good for you. You've won $500 cash from the new movie, The Descent. Breathe your last breath in theaters everywhere Friday, August 4th. Thank you, Howard. All right. And just as a... Artie, quit being... I mean, not Artie. Sal, quit being such a pussy. Shut up, you idiot. You shut up, you moron. <laughs> you fat, fucking, miserable, retarded dope. Oh, Why don't you take a tomato, shove it up butt. your ass, and choke on it and die? Oh, yeah, don't make me come up there and kick your butt, Sal. Let me tell you something. If I ever saw you come out of my wife's twat, I would just smash your face in right in the hospital <laughs> office. I'd throw you right in the garbage like the shit that you are, you retard. Oh, come on. Jesus. Come on. What did he just say? He's yelling at a poor girl. At a retarded girl. girl. Don't you are a shame on you. Retarded cunt. Oh. Oh. oh, yeah. I may be a little cunt, but to me, you're, you're not a little cunt. You're, you're like John Candy with a twat. You're fucking disgusting. <laughs> you're far from Wendy, little. don't listen to him. He doesn't know anything. He's just upset I'm because cheater. he's a cheater. Wendy, tell him where your clitoris is. My Taurus? I'm Taurus the Bull, boy, and you don't mess with retarded Taurus. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Wendy may be retarded, but I trust her more than you, Sal. Really? Uh, that's all I'm going to say. All right. Hold on for your prize, Wendy. All right, Howard. And, all right. and don't eat it, Wendy. Yeah, it's money. That's a good I point. I know that, she'll, she'll mistake it for lettuce, the fat pig. Oh, come on, Sal. You're, you're out of line now. You really disgraced yourself Well, you know, you, you pin me as a cheater and everything else and fucking piss me off. It's horseshit. I really you are a cheater. All right, good. I'm a cheater. You are. It's proven. Yes, very good. There's no way you can get talk your way out of it. All right. All right. Hold on, please, Wendy. All right, Howard. Thank you. We don't know how many of those other questions he cheated on. I'm sure all of them. Every single one. Every one. <laughs> Bong How did he come back in that contest? Hey, Robin, I cheated and I lost. <laughs> How stupid is that? Bong hit Eric, you're on the air. Hey, now. Hey, now. Yo, man, I'll pay for his therapy. I'll give him the 500 bucks to admit he cheated. <laughs> well, he, he knows he did. I admit it, He Eric. knows he did. He admit does. It. He knows. Yeah. All right, I'm let's uh, call an end to the game. Congratulations to Richie Wilson from Howard TV. Thank you. Lonnie, I'll be seeing you this weekend with my 500 bucks. That's right. It'll go right into the scores. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just some send it over to the scores. It'll Give go it right over to the scores till. Okay. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you from Howard Stern Show Trivia Game. And Richard, put your clothes back on. And for those of you who think Sal didn't suffer, as soon as we caught him cheating, Richard went over and rubbed his penis all over Sal's back. <laughs> so he paid the price. <laughs> didn't Howard Stern, super fan. 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 That's all. What type of shit is for real? Look at me and admit you cheated. I did not cheat. I wrote everything on. I wrote, admit it. I'm you not didn't write shit. I'm not going to have you, you paint me. You said Davidson after he said it. Right, but I wrote John. You said put your pants. John what? John Stamos. What? You said you could have scribbled Davidson if you knew it. You I even, swear to We would have even taken. And not you John D. D. Listen, the D you still been won't admit Wait, you cheated. Hold on. You still will not admit you cheated. You better fucking believe I won't. You're a fucking cheat. No, listen to me. You're painting me like a cheat. He looks like a gay Darth Maul. Look at him. <laughs> Welcome back to the wrap up show. That was a good one. You got to go to the website to get that joke. Yeah, and that was an apt. Would you agree, Sal? That was an apt description of your. Uh, yeah, your Gary face hit it right on the head. That was really good.
All right, now Sal's joining us along with Richard. Doug Goodstein's here, Brian Phelan, Richie Wilson, uh, Jason Kaplan, everybody involved in what went on today. Now, Sal, I mean, we heard that out chant. Did you really feel like you were being unjustly ganged up on there? Because of course, you can tell. You could tell that everybody was having a field day at my expense. That's what these guys do. Well, let me ask you point blank, Sal. Did you cheat? No. Oh. <laughs> did I take on, did I, who's it? Who's it? Did I take on tactics that appear to be cheating? Yes. <laughs> can you explain that, please? <laughs> What's the difference? Wait, no, explain that. Okay. In certain circumstances, I had one answer. Howard's like saying, hurry up. I wasn't sure. So on the flip side, twice, I wrote the second answer. But the second answer that I wrote, I put up. Every time I wrote a second answer, I circled it and I put that one up. And you could go to the video and see it. It's no different. The than video is not your friend in this argument, by I know. the way. Um, I know. So <laughs> when you look at the video, you see all sorts of crap going on. First, you tried to cheat early in the game. Yes. When? You you had Richard Belzer written on your piece of paper, and you tried to say I that, crossed it out. Right, no, and you tried to say David Brenner out loud. No, he did oh, yeah, say and it. I, and I said, I said to Howard, we all laughed. That was the joke. No, no, I, no, 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 no. You had to wait for someone to point it out to you. You were still no, going no, no. along with I it. Yeah, hard. you and Mike pointed yeah, it out. I saw it. I told Ganji, and Jason. it wasn't until Ganji pointed out to you that you right. admitted that you cheated we, on that I, question. Right. Let me finish. I looked at... <clears throat> excuse me. I looked at Ganji... <laughs> Ganji looked at me. We both laughed really hard, bl made it so blatantly obvious that something was up. Howard said, what happened, Sal? I said, I didn't have it. Okay, question. No. And Had that you was a joke. No. Question. You and Ganji look at each other. You laugh really hard. Howard doesn't say what happened. Moving along. Are you telling anybody what happened? If I said yes, would you believe me? No. Okay, so why say yeah, but yes? But he's lying. That's not even how it happened. Well, how did it happen? Asshole. I, asshole. What? Listen to the fucking tape. We laughed hard. Howard said, what happened? Why are you trying to make something more out of this? Because you're lying. I'm not lying. That's yes, what, you are. Dude, listen, what happened was. He laughs. He says, what happened? He laughs at you because you look like an idiot. I turned to Ganji and I said, what he just said is not written on his paper. That's when Ganji looked over at you and he was about to say something. And then you you tried, you tried, saw that he was going to call you out on it, so you admitted it. Okay, so you're making an assumption that Gary Ganji saw me looking at him, therefore I joined I'm in the I'm not making laughter. any assumptions. Well, Gan Ganji went happened. over and looked at your paper. Right. I, I admit it. I, I blatantly put up a different name, laughed hard, and told Howard it, I didn't have the right answer. After you were called out on it. Right. But Gary, <laughs> said, but Gary said, if I was called in advance, would I have said, yeah, would I've, if I wasn't called, would I have come forward and said it? And I said yes, but nobody believes that. But you didn't that, do that so at the end cares? of the game. And yeah, well, let's right. get to the end. At the last question, Sal, if you get it right, you win. What did you have written down? I had John, but not John Davidson. And I had Shadow Stevens. Okay, now how did you write that? Did you write Shadow Stevens and then John after? Or I wrote John that? after. I wrote John after Shadow. I, I wrote person who replaced Howard. I wrote too much. That's the problem. Shadow <laughs> Stevens, which by the way, nobody wrote down. There wasn't any way of copying it. There wasn't a flip on the paper. I blatantly got it right. And then I wrote John and Howard goes pens down. Now Richie Wilson said John Davidson. He got it right. I hold up and I say John no, Davidson. You didn't hold up. Shadow Stevens. You no. didn't hold up. I, on okay, South. Direct question. On the life of your children. Oh, don't listen on to me. On the life of no, little, going, little, no, no, little no, no, beautiful no, no. Antonio. No, no. Did you write John on the piece of paper after Richie Wilson said John Davidson? Did you write it, John, no. on the piece of paper? No. On the life of Antonio, the no, love so, of your first life. All, first of all, I told you, Gary, off the air, don't bring my children into this stuff. <laughs> when did you tell me that? Wrong. That's just wrong. Did, did you know it was John Davidson? You're an atheist, so what do you care? I don't I mean, care. This this is they're not my kids. Kid. That's the only way to get to you. Listen to me. The thing is, whether I didn't write it down... After Richie Wilson. If you want to go to the tape and see, you'll find out for yourself. I wrote it down at the time. I wrote John, not John Davidson. But why wouldn't, you, why wouldn't you write the whole name? Because Howard said, pens down. That's, That's so lame. All man. right, well, look at the tape. I don't care. John, what the first thing you wrote? It looks let's like on a piece of on, paper. Let's focus top. on me getting Shadow fucking Stevens right. Come on. I well, got Richie got John Davidson right. right. Who cares? That's good. Good for him. But that doesn't matter. Sal, hold on. Doug Goodstein, you were on the you were in the control. You know what was going on here. You you got the cameras. Did he write it or didn't he write it? Uh, for that one, I don't know if we were actually isolating, but it, we were just watching the whole thing going on throughout the whole show. He was doing flip sides on about four or five different That's questions. That's right. And again, it would appear to be and that then, I was cheating, but I was changing my mind. <laughs> no, so when he didn't call on you, you're such a fool. Just, just, just admit out. it. And just, Has well, Sal just actually, more have you admitted to cheating yet? No. I'm not admitting to cheating. I'm admitting to I appeared to be. Behavior that okay, be okay. Why Benji. on the last answer did you not hold up the sign? I don't remember. If I did, I'm sorry. But regardless, you didn't. okay. Regardless of me not holding it up or not, because Shadow you intentionally Stevens. didn't want him to read what you Sha had written down. No, Shadow Stevens. Was That's not there. the point. The point is whether or not you cheated. We 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 know you got Shadow Again, Stevens. I didn't cheat. It Rich, do you think he cheated? cheated? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rich will always go with the gang, you know, because that's the funny and easy way to go. Sal, hold on. Sal, will you give an answer, though? Did you cheat or not? I did not cheat. I appeared to did be cheating. Did you try to cheat? Did you try? Did <laughs> you got you, caught. No. <laughs> I knew John David. Unfortunately, I wish I had Davidson written down on there because I knew it was John Davidson. It's, and it's fair to assess that if I knew Shadow Stevens was his replacement, I so probably no. knew John no, Davidson was the host. Why did you start that, admit to cheating in the studio? What's that? Why did you start admit to cheating? Because you got because it turned into a whole bit on your ass. Like I, I gave in. I threw in the towel. Fine, I cheated. I don't want to be on this stupid shtick. All right. I, I don't like about, shtick. All right. Hold on. Hold on. You said it's all for okay, TV. Okay. Wait. 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 How about, how about it's all for TV? How about that? Oh uh, yeah. And then I go to the back. I go. Yeah, of course. You know that's the game. Hold on. All right, hold guys. On. Hold on. Got a bunch of people in the studio. By a show of by a show of hands, applaud if you think Sal cheated. Applaud. Okay, if, if you don't think Sal cheated, applaud. Thank you, Teddy. Teddy. All right, that kind of that kind of sounds. Well, I'm just going to say something. You said if you knew Shadow Stevens, it's a fair assumption to say that you knew John Davidson. But then you would say for Richie knew John Davidson, it would be a fair assumption that's he true. knew Shadow Stevens. That's true, too. and he didn't. So but that, I think that deflates that argument. No, well, Gary, out of the two, what do you think would be more difficult to answer? The host that's on every week, or a guy who Howard matter? Actually, well, actually, I think you're not Gary Fat, so keep quiet. <laughs> I'm talking to Gary. Who do you think? Out of the two, what do you think would be harder to answer? The Shadow Stevens one is harder. Well, that's why that's every, where, you should be able to remember John Davidson did it for the whole life of the show. Well, that's where my assumptions okay. coming from. If South didn't cheat and held, held up that piece of paper and it just said John, do you think the answer would have been accepted? No, and I'll of tell you what. Not. The other thing too, All right, is, and that's fine. And you know do you, what? Do you, I didn't complain. Are about you still? Are it. you Wendy still? Took my money. Are She's you still happy? crying about the fact that you got ripped off on Neil CV? Because you didn't get it right. Uh, no, I'm not. No, no, I, I was upset. You know, it, I was upset when you're so close to that answer. But it wasn't the right answer. You and it wasn't right. That's of course, okay. it definitely wasn't the right answer. But technically, he lost so... anyway because he got the captain one wrong. Yeah, and, and let's go. Let's look at. Let's. I want to yeah, talk about the, the broader. One. I want to talk about the broader thing going on too. I was really surprised that all of you guys there were answers that you guys just didn't know. Yeah, actually, Ralph, you're on the phone. You wanted to weigh in about that. Yeah, I mean, to me, fuck Sal. I mean, thank it's you, a Ralph. Big, and by the way, Antonio was your kid's name. What was little Guido taking? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yes, yeah, you guys suck. What was, I mean, little, uh, what was little Guido taking? Um, what type of shit is that? Yeah, that was a good one. You anti-Semite. Um, you didn't know double O zeros? I mean, that was the theme song for like six years. You didn't know Club Benet? Yeah, it was Club a Benet. shocker. A shocker. I mean, nobody you knew guys it. Suck. Listen, Richie got Richie that one. Richie got it. That yeah. was a shocker. Richard, Rick, Richard Christie, you got barely nothing. I actually beat you. So I you still got, I got ones that you didn't get. All right. I got one that we had on the Friday show two fucking weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, because that you didn't it. even remember. Well, thank God. Thank God, God, God you just shows on, how much you pay God attention you on that Friday to the show. show. You would have gotten a complete zero. Right, hold you on, guys. Hold on. Benji, go ahead. Ralph, now that we're talking about the trivia contest, who did you fuck on Ecstasy? <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> I don't think that's trivia. <laughs> it would be great. It would be great classic Let's story trivia. Ralph trivia. Sam Simon. <laughs> Ralph, can you, can you, will you give permission to tell that story? Will I give written? No, I mean, I, yeah, I would love. To tell I, the, I, 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 I spoke, would love to tell the story, but uh, if it's the story I'm thinking of, but there's two other, three other people involved. Well, that uh, I, I spoke to Ralph this morning, and he said, "I said, you know, well, how?" He goes, "Listen, I can't do that now." And he said, "I said, Howard said, would you at least talk to the people and see if it's okay?" And Ralph goes, "That's just never going to happen." <laughs> <It's not> gonna, <laughs> I mean, All right, I guess that one stays in the vault for a while. Now, Ralph, you thought that there were there were no Howard Stern super fans present at this game? No. It was ridiculous. I mean, it was like super easy stuff. I mean, uh, like, uh, Ralph, how much did you know? Uh, the only one I didn't know was how many, like, the, uh, I thought it was uh, he made $22,000 a year, yeah, see, not 12000 See, I should That's play Ralph. Should it should be me, Ralph, and, like, Scott the Engineer against each other. That's a super fan. Well, Brian Phelan's here. Brian, what's the deal? I thought you you were part of this, not a part of this? I, originally, I was on the uh, on the first list of uh, to do this, and then I got bumped for Richie, which because he came up with the idea. So here's what's going to go on. Okay. The, the next time we get some money again in the next two or three weeks, round two is going to be Phelan, uh, Jason, and who else to do? Uh, who's it? Brian hey. Will Will knows a lot. No, no, no there was somebody else that wanted that really wanted. No, but it, you got to you got to go back. I mean, these people qualify it with. Well, I didn't listen to all NBC. You know, I've been listening since the beginning. You got to get. Yeah, but I knew some NBC questions, even though I didn't listen to NBC. Well, who should be the, the third questions. person? I, I got. I can't remember who I had it. Angie, no. No, Dan Song Parody Man um, knows a ton no. of stuff. But I think I think that uh, the winner of that will play the winner of today. And but, the winner of today was Richie Wilson. That's right. Official, okay. Yeah. So yeah. congratulations, Richie. You moved Yo, on to the next you. round. Can All we right. get more money though than five hundred? No. No. All right. Here's somebody who here's somebody who thinks Sal um, a made dollar a mistake for every today. Pound for you, Wendy, buddy. you're on the wrap up show. Sal, you know what? You need a good goddamn kick in the butt. That's what you need because you did cheat, you damn ass prick ass bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you're pretty good. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, don't make me kick that ass, biatch. Hey, Wendy, do you know that Sal's black? I, I know he's black. I could kick his black ass. Wendy, since I'm black, what do you think of me? I think you're, I think you're a biatch. What kind of biatch? Uh, biatch where you are a two-year-old cheater wine Right, Wendy, what do you think of me? It rhymes with trigger, and it's not figure. I think you, I think you are a big, <laughs> ugly, punk-ass <laughs> nigger. <Yeah! laughs> hey, Wendy, stay in your car, bro. That sounded great. And you know what? You don't have nothing to say, Sal, because you know a retard can kick hey, your all ass. All right, Wendy, let's stay, on the, let's stay on this black trivia. Uh, okay. What do you think of me? It rhymes with rear fucker. Rear fucker? Yeah. Uh, if you're a good fuck, I'll I'll probably fuck you. Okay, you got that one wrong. All right, thanks, Wendy. I got to let you go. <laughs> Sal, of course, bringing out the racism, as always, in the wrap-up show. We appreciate that. Let's go to uh, Jeff in Oklahoma. Jeff, you're on a wrap-up show. Bullshit, Sal, man. You thanks, innocent, brother. Man. You're innocent. I think no, the only not. reason that you gave in is because of all the pressure. I yeah, Thank you. I mean, finally somebody's seeing that. It, they, these guys know that I'm a hothead, and I cave under pressure, and I turn into a complete moron, more than I am already, and I had to just say, yeah, you're right, I cheated. You know, I admitted everything. I admitted I wrote answers on both sides, which makes me look like I cheat. And I admitted I wrote John instead of John Davidson, which makes me look like I cheated. So under and pressure, you'll lie. Under pressure? No. Whenever so when you're in a high-pressure situation, like winning a contest, you might lie, too. No, I didn't lie. I said I gave in to the fact that I cheated just to end it and move on. Jason, what were you going to say? You cheated. There's no question about it. I feel like that's your opinion. At least two questions. What about, what about opinion? What about, have you ever cheated? You. Have you ever cheated? Not that I can think on of. On a diet, no. maybe, you fat slob. Well, please, with your big floppy tits at that contest. Well, I don't, don't care. I'm proud of them. All right, all right, kids. Let's Would go. you do a lie detector test? Absolutely. What about the question that we had yesterday about the news? Uh, right, the, the news person. In How many questions say? did we ask each other? We Brian? asked a lot, but that one you pulled out of the out of the sky. I well, because that's that a hard. Was... Wait a minute. We asked about shadow traffic. We asked about news. We what? asked about. But what are you saying, Brian? Are you saying that, that Sal had some prior? I think knowledge? he might have known a couple of questions beforehand wow. because the exact same two questions on which today. two? It was the news one, and I can't think of the other one offhand. The only was... one which which came out today was and the news one, and I got it me. wrong. Yeah. You were like, I got it wrong. And I said, you, I don't know what it is. You got it right. That's what I did. No, I, did. You off I, think you're, I, I think you're a bad cheater. Is what it Who's is. the one who had the questions? Who wrote them? John Hine. I did. John, did anybody have access to your questions? No. I quizzed a few people on them, but I didn't know which ones were written down there. I mean, I might have asked some of those questions to some people in here, but I didn't know which ones were going to be used on the on the actual but quiz. if I was accessible to an, a question like that, Brian, why would I ask you to quiz you and to quiz me back? I didn't even know the answer myself. And, the other thing is and then I asked John Hine a few questions this morning, and that question was the one again, because I kept forgetting that guy's name. That was actually, I still fucked it up. Yeah, that was, was pretty funny. About 7 o'clock, Sal was asking me a couple questions. He's like, okay, WNBC, we played on the Friday show. Who's the news guy? I was like, Neil Seavey. I wanted to remember Neil Seavey, <laughs> and Roz Frank, and Debbie Fiducia. And an hour... <laughs> And an hour You're later, crap and an hour crazy. later, he walks in with I mean, Neil Seaver, Debbie Fiducia, and the other one. Right. So I got him all wrong. All right. So you know what? Even cheating, even asking questions, what happens in the end? I lose. You're a loser. That's, I'm a complete loser. Okay. God bless the Stern fans and everybody else. It's been a pleasure. I love you all. Sal, thanks for wrapping us up. I want to thank JD for coming in and sharing his music with us. Also, uh, Richie Wilson, Benji, Brian Phelan. Richard Christie, Jason Kaplan, anybody else who was in here, thanks. Gary, always a pleasure. Thanks, John. And uh, let's see, we got a couple more seconds. So, oh, another thing we need to talk about very, very quickly, cabbie fooled by the Riley clips. I mean, every day, is somebody going to talk to Riley's voice without Riley being it's there? Very, it's very easy, though, because Riley doesn't make sense when he talks. So if you just keep playing non sequiturs, it doesn't seem odd. All right, thanks for listening to the wrap-up show, which you can hear all day. I got to tell you something, Reverend Bob Levy, and he's a funny guy. You know I love Bob, and that's why he's on the channels. But he he decided to write like one of those Baba Booey songs, right? Which you can't miss with. Yeah. It is so unfunny. Oh, and he, really? he told all the guys, "Wait till Howard hears this. <laughs> he's going to think it's the funniest right, thing." You're if killing him right now. I right know, now, he's I know Bob's going to kill himself. Hey, what page is that on? Leah, let's hear it. You got to hear this. May, oh, if I'm wrong, you tell me, and I'll apologize to Bob. But Wait a second. Oh, here it is. I got it. This is uh, Bob Levy singing Baba Booey Land Forever, okay? okay? You got it? You got the premise now? Here we go. Ready to go.
He looks like he lives in a tree. <laughs> He's half man and half monkey. It's getting hard to look at him in his mouth because his teeth are yellow like pea. <laughs> Let me take you down, cause I'm going to Baba Booey Land. <laughs> so He's bad. Happy, you know what this is? Half man. This is a swing and a mess. His teeth are gnarly and hang out of his mouth. Funny too, he goes, "Let me take you down, cause I'm go." Like it's a parody. You're not supposed to have the same uh, words as the yeah, Beatles. And then he says, "Yell, yell like P." Yell mean? like P. Yell yeah, like P. But he, he didn't finish yellow. He said, "His teeth are yell like P." Yell like P. You want to do heroin, man? A few <laughs> things wrong with this, like you know, he, too many words for you know the right. for the punchline to finally come. And let's yeah. face it, the bar has been raised. We have so many good ones. Play some of the good ones. Like there's a, there's a couple of new ones. Oh, really. really Why would one. you try to jump into this? Arena? Well, yell! I go. I gotta hear yell like P first. Wait. He, he's half man and half monkey. It's getting hard to look at him in his mouth, mouth. because his teeth are yell like P. Yell like P. <laughs> Let me take you down, cause I'm going to. <laughs> going to. Papa Bluey Land. Baba Bowie. At least you just forget land. Just say Baba He's Bowie. Half, babe, half man. But you don't understand. He needed the land to make his that His teeth are gnarly oh. and hang out of his mouth. <laughs> doesn't it? Baba Bowie land forever. Oh. It sounds so funny. <laughs> <Baba Bowie. laughs> is there another Wait. one you can play that might be better than that? Hey, Howard. Yeah. After Bob recorded this, he, he with the seriously, he goes, man, I got to get a studio in my basement. Oh. Oh. Right. Oh, yeah. I said, You're this is dying. brilliant. Yeah. Oh, Sal leads people out. It's crazy. <laughs> Bob, nice job. Hey, when do you want me to do another one? Can you do it live? Do one every day. <laughs> I hear you're building a studio in your basement. Well, I have the trucks coming later on today. So, Dude, you, you can't know. miss with a Bob of Bowie's on. I just say, brick up the door, Bob. Don't ever come out again. Right. <laughs> nice job. Uh, you got any defense on that one? Yell like P? No, you know, it was the first one, so I, uh, I think I had to You thought it. you nailed it, though, didn't you? He did. He told no, everyone. I, knew I didn't nail it. He goes, Howard's going to love this one. <laughs> Bob. Oh, is that Sal? Sal, you are such a little fucking lion rat fuck. <laughs> he looks like he lives in a tree. <laughs> He's half man and half monkey. It's getting hard to look at him in his mouth Because his teeth are yellow like pee Why did you put his like yellow? Pee. Let me take you down Cause I'm going to <laughs> John Lennon right there Baba Booey Land I like the harmonies coming up too right. He's half ape, half man his teeth are gnarly and hang out of his mouth. <laughs> Baba Booey Land forever. Nice. Baba Booey Land forever. <laughs> Baba Booey Land forever. <laughs> yeah, I like how you let it play out. Look, look, look at this. It's not done yet. <laughs> it's going to the next one. We had, we had Have so another much, Marlboro Red. We had so much work to do on Monday, and Bob comes in begging us to work on lyrics with him. And we, when we heard the idea, we were like, uh, Bob, you just work on that yourself. <laughs> hey, you know keep what? it to You'll yourself. You'll never get that song out of your head today. That's one thing I did. I'm sure. Yeah, that, thanks for that. Yeah, considering you didn't write that part of the music. I could see myself bombing on Letterman Lady cause, later because I'm thinking of that. <laughs> yeah, you want to go on and start singing that. <laughs> Bob, Bob, Bowie, land forever. Hey, Where Bob, are some of the new Bob, Bowie songs that were a couple that think came I'm on your page and great. This one's great. <laughs> what else you got? Um, you have to do Grease, Baba Booey. Where is that? On one Gary preview page in red. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good ones there, but uh, Bob's, I don't know. Yeah, I, did, I didn't write that last one. Listen to this one, obviously. Bob 
that's a that's a production. You can't fuck mm-hmm. up a Bowie song. That guy should have a oh, thing yes, in his face. Can. Well, Bob, Bob just proved did. it. Yeah, Bob did it. Bob managed to do it. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank the Reverend you. Bob Levy. And by the way, Bob is, uh, of course, uh, the star of Miserable Men. And also on Sal's show, uh, Killer Be Killed. That's right. Him and Artie and um, Robin Quivers. Tonight, it's Meet the Frados. That- uh, this is Elegant Elliot. Didn't I tell you, Stern, this message is for Stern. You were going to lose your fucking underwear and you were going to lose your fucking cock, right? The new report, you lost another $272 million for this quarter, right? <laughs> Isn't that fucking great, right? Listen, I told you a long time ago, right? Months ago, you became a fucking beast to a fucking crop duster, right? A fucking crumb bomb. In other words, a fucking sap sucker. No more, no less than a fucking broken finger, a fucking rusty nail. Just another fucking sore throat, a fucking malignant tumor, right? And to echo my words, right, you fucking slob. They left you to dead. They left you to die face down, right? They left you to fucking die, clear channels, right? Isn't that terrific? All right. In any event, right? Okay. Um, I told you one more time. I'm going to say it again to you, right? Okay. Uh, you're in the twilight. <laughs> you're in the twilight of your fucking career. And remember, you're a white leghorn, right? That can gangster talk. Gay is a yellow, yellow fucking dog, right? Some fucking dude, some fucking cat. Spat. They spit all over your piece of shit girlfriend, Beth, right? What'd you fucking do? You ran under the fucking cab looking for a cop car, right? <laughs> you ran under the cab looking for a cop car. You might as well get elegant on the show to save your fucking balls, to save your fucking tits, to save your fucking asshole. Otherwise, you'll fucking be drowning. The water is over your fucking head. Nobody can save that fucking show that you got with your fucking regurgitation jokes, right? And your fucking flatulent jokes, right? And your fucking defecation jokes, right? They made you into a fucking recluse. Chào các mọi người, hôm nay bên em là một chiếc Mazda CX-5 Xe sản xuất 2019 bản 2.0 Dulac 
và Mazda CX-5 là một trong những dòng xe gầm cao của thương hiệu Mazda Nhật Bản đó. và hôm nay thì xe này cái màu màu đỏ rất là phù hợp cho kể cả nữ hàng nam đều rất là phù hợp xe này thì thông thường sẽ có những bản 2.5 nhưng mà đây là bản 2.0 đấy nhìn rất là đẹp màu đỏ